Okay, starting we're over. We're supposed to actually wait till we actually get going and see what we're doing first. Okay. Okay. All right, five on mute. There we go. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you can vote multiple times in this poll. And as Lori was saying, we had a comment on YouTube by somebody who said they love our streams, uh, but they thought it was boring that we read every single boring comment out loud. And uh, so we want you want to know if you want us to read every every comment or only discuss selected most interesting uh, comments that lead to discussions, uh, talk about the game development, or mostly play the game. So vote for as many of these as you like. Uh, for very, something else. Okay, there we go. That isn't very useful, Corey. We actually want an answer, not people just randomly choosing things. I mean, really. So, the point is... Uh, okay, so what's something else would you like, uh, Bill Kuhn? Well, that's... It. Wait till we're done with the... No, I want to know. Uh, it might as well, because it's going to take people a while it to will, vote. As people and OSU uh, wants to vote okay, for Okay, fine. Let's see what they want. Because <coughs> we'll read it. I was going to take a cough drop. You were, and you were working on it before we got distracted by actually having to do something. Ah, vote for all the things, yes. Half comments, half game, yeah. Ah, okay, half comments, half game, yes. <coughs> so that would mean no, uh, no dev talk, because there won't be time to talk about that. We'll moment. talk dev, too, you know? Because that's what we do. Yes, because I'm here for whatever, you guys. Yeah, right. That's what I sort of figured, because most people are probably just listening along and not actually watching the two of us just sit here. Over on our Patreon, I uh, posted something a couple hours ago, um, hour and a half ago, uh, talking a little bit about uh, why spring has sprung is the theme of this stream. Oh. That's uh, almost, uh, you did. That's almost nice... a tongue twister. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, the idea of how uh, Heroes Quest 1 is set in the springtime, and it is a traditional, you know, that's kind of a trope in uh, uh, fiction of all sorts, but fantasy fiction in particular, of the uh, young, inexperienced, usually a man, uh, going out and deciding that he wants to have adventures. Uh, and so that's kind of what Heroes Quest is all about, the first game. Okay. Um, there's more to it, in, uh, so you should read the Patreon. Right, so he's not going to tell you everything that was in that Patreon. Well, no, because we want I'll you be to reading actually it all. read it or when you're... When you... Well, you could if she wants. No, that's... I am, actually, but I, did come... I hadn't read it previously, yes. I did come up with the line, In the spring, a young man's fancy turns to adventuring! Correct. After all, it's boring in the winter time. So, all right. Yes, we were going... Let's see if people want me to play. Oh, okay, well, good for them. Ah, just play the stupid game, huh? Okay. Yeah, the problem with just playing the game and the problem with playing the game and commenting is that we cannot read and uh, uh, and actually see the uh, um, the scrolling um, texts and things because they're covered. I mean, because we can't interact with the... Uh, one screen while we're playing the game. So that's why we have to... Uh, Except when I can remember whether it's control enter or alt enter or what that yeah. switches modes. Alright. And Bill says that his love of audio visual... Oh, and the other reason I read these things out loud is because I'm assuming some of you not, you know, not naming names, are actually not watching our talk, but are busy scrolling through their internet or looking at their uh, other things. What are you so, doing that? Yeah, so that's why I tend to read what people comment. And Bill was saying his love of audio vi uh, video equipment came in handy this week. My cats took too much of a liking to my motion-activated kitchen faucet. Ooh, wasting water and making a mess all night while I la slept. The signal goes through a 3.5 millimeter TRRS cord. So I ordered a TRRS cord and a TRRS AB switch and Velcroed the switch inside the sink. So therefore, the cat couldn't just make it work, yes. Also, I like the stream poster. Who drew it? Ah, the stream poster? Was that the... Uh, that's this one. That's the... Uh, uh, 
Did JP the, draw this? Yes, it was, yes, that's the Uranus piece we had made for uh, uh, the posters for uh, uh, Road to Redemption. Oh, I don't have it anymore. I don't have the, uh, the copy of it, mm. the print. We had one. I guess one we, gave it to, we gave it to somebody, I believe. Maybe. I, don't I know. think we gave it to uh, our, our uh, programmer, the one that was in. Koshua? Uh, no, uh, uh, the woman that helped us. Sydney. Meet. Not the not Sydney again. The uh, woman. That, the woman that lived in San, that we met in San Francisco. Oh, uh, Judy. Uh, Judy. Judy. Yes, who worked in the Bay Area. Or didn't, but we was in the barrier. Yes, J.P. Bell, so would uh, do did the painting based on uh, Arana's piece in Hero's Quest. Yes. And Arlo says, I think Hero's Quest is an interesting combination of tropes. The thing of a young man wanting to go out and adventure, the thing of a hero entering a new place, and by the time he leaves, everything is different, is out of Greek epics. But you seem to have combined it with a medieval guild system where a person traveling from place to place learning his craft and wasn't allowed to go back to his hometown for seven years. Oh, that's a great idea. I don't think we thought about that. No, but... we weren't going with that route. So. But we will say that Hero's Quest and the Quest for Glory series was based on uh, our tabletop role-playing uh, system that we invented called Fantasy Guild. And that was all about uh, joining guilds in order to learn a class of skills or a type of magic and the idea is that joining a new guild was hard there was a essentially an, uh, an initiation fee in terms of experience points uh, and so getting into a new guild was hard and then progressing through the guild was a little easier so that once you join the fire mages uh, you could learn all sorts of fire spells but if you wanted to do frost spells as well you had to join the frost guild um, so yeah, we were going with a we, we came originally with the idea of going with guilds, but we did not incorporate it in this one. The hero is not a member of the heroes guild. Um and uh also okay. uh, also uh, Arlo Hero said, "I think you're doing the stream fine the way it is. Why tamper with perfection?" Yes, so yes. Somebody who is here, yes, indeed. The Coles put so much research into the games. They don't even know what they did. This series is amazing. <laughs> yeah. Well, we did put we did put a lot of research into it. We wanted to make these games rich, and we wanted to make you feel like you were living the world, which is, you know, the whole point of a game is to be, you know, to become somebody new and do stuff different. So it's, it's the avatar system. This is an extension of yourself. And, yes. uh, you know, back in the pre-internet games when we did these, uh, uh, for each game, our shelves, uh, our bookshelves filled up with uh, uh, new books uh, that were researched for each game. So before we did Quest for Glory 3, all of a sudden all kinds of African art books and so on yes. showed up. Some of which Lori owned previously, but others were new. Right. Uh, we don't have, we didn't do too much research for this since this was the uh, drawing upon all our background. I mean, uh, which it was, we had years of background and the books on, you know, mythology and, and folk tales and Baba Yaga and the such. So, and tabletop role playing. And tabletop role playing. So we were pulling upon our already rich inheritance of, of back story, you know. Oh, maybe the problem is with us, says Arlo. Nah, we, we love you. Uh, we tend not to. We no, no, you don't have to read every word. Just to read, read the summaries. I am. Okay, I'm reading it because I'm reading it while I'm doing this, Corey. So, because I can't read from this to from this distance, ah. I have to move forward. And, and you have to speak out loud in order to read. read. All right, fuck. Excuse that word. No. She didn't use that word. I didn't use that word. Quick, I don't... cut that out. All right. All right. Let's see. Uh, so, I'm not supposed to read every word because Corey went with an internet comment. There's one internet one comment. Internet said comment. said don't read every boring word. So, I, and I think this is what we're here for, is okay. to talk to people and to see what they're saying. So, but according to my poll, I am. we're here to play the game. Well, we have to play the game. Clearly, we won't be spending the whole time doing that. Yes. <laughs> yes, demonetized. Yes, I just did it. Oh, no! Yes. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, oh, well. Ah, uh, yes. 
then Lex, going back to the comment I was trying to read, but somebody said I shouldn't read, is uh, we tend to not to shut up and get involved with the game when you start playing. Yes, the, well, what's the point of us playing it? You guys have done this before. You guys all played the games. Yeah, you know what we're doing. I don't think we have a lot we of... We may uh, not know what we're doing. I don't think we have a lot of people on the stream that are new to uh, Quest for Glory. No. Yes, maybe keep doing what you're doing, and the le and us spectators should agree to be better guests. I think you're perfect guests myself. And you're wonderful. Yes. And but you can only type in brilliant uh, uh, original insights, which uh, Arlo does, by the way, yeah. very frequently. Yes. And has to be read. And Brainiac thinks that QFG was so simpatico because he had a taste for the old folklore stories and that then the series was excellent about adapting those from the world over. Yes, we wanted to create also a world where those things could be real, yes. New pool! How scandalized are you by Lori dropping the F word? Oh no, my virgin ears. Yeah. Do it again. <coughs> What's your favorite swear? That is not... I, I don't normally swear, so therefore I don't have a favorite. There. <coughs> Massive screen of foul language redacted, yes. Ah. So, uh, one of my off-told stories, I don't th know if I've done it here, though, because uh, different contexts, uh, is uh, I took a year off college to work for GI Computers up in Canada, and I had a co-worker uh, who had a different insulting term for uh, every uh, race and nationality, uh, and uh, who liked to spice up uh, his language uh, with uh, F-bombs about every seventh word or so, uh, and... It was fine. I, you know, I was, I was perfectly happy with that. Uh, but a year later, I found myself installing software at Continental Bank in Chicago, and uh, working with uh, uh, Ed Wonderum. Uh, I remember now, uh, one of the systems analysts there. And Ed uh, took me aside one day and said, "You know, this is a bank, uh, and we're professional, and we don't use language like that around here." And I was like, "What language?" And and realized that after working with this guy up in Canada, uh, that I had picked up some of his uh, speech mannerisms and that I was occasionally using not entirely appropriate for banking business uh, language. Uh, you know, we were working behind the scenes and like the computer areas and stuff. This, was, this wasn't public facing, but, uh, uh, you know, Ed corrected me that basically you need a certain amount of propriety in that setting. So... Uh, we all pick up things, you know, and as a teenager, I remember that, uh, you know, anytime I would uh, talk with someone that had an interesting accent, uh, by about halfway through the conversation, I would find myself unintentionally duplicating their accent. Uh, and some people got very offended by that. Others were amused. Yeah, uh, I will do that automatically. Too. Yeah. Yes. And uh, Terrible Sauce says, when you work with computers, inevitably you drop some F-bombs. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, but, uh, yeah, so uh, I discovered you kind of have to uh, know your audience, uh, know the environment you're in, and uh, it's uh, choose accordingly. It's called awareness. Always <coughs> be aware of your environment and, and behave accordingly to what is appropriate to stay alive, you know? Uh, speaking of uh, raid awareness, uh, my uh, World of Warcraft story for the day is uh, uh, that in the... Uh, uh, occasionally, World of Warcraft introduces uh, uh, what they call a legendary uh, weapon or other item uh, that is generally very difficult to get and lots of stabs and very rare. Uh, and the latest one is a two-handed axe usable by uh, only by uh, plate-wearing classes and uh, that people have been trying since the uh, previous patch to uh, get this two-handed weapon called Firoloth. Uh, and... You know, it's like disappointment week after week after week. Well, on Tuesday, I brought one of my secondary characters into, uh, you know, the easier normal raid as opposed to heroic raid. Uh, and I uh, got to the final boss. And, uh, uh, in fact, I think I swapped him in for the final boss. And the weapon dropped. And uh, he got it. And it was like, whoa! You know, and, of course, the... Uh, uh, the, the warrior that's super geared and really good and has been trying to get all this time was like, ah, uh, F-bomb you. Uh, uh, but no, actually, you know, happy for you. Congratulations. He actually traded me some gold because it's really expensive to make. Uh, and so I, you know, spent most of uh, 
uh, Tuesday night and Wednesday working on that. And, uh, it, it took weeks originally. Now it takes days. Uh, and so comes Thursday, and I'm back on the Alliance side. That was the Horde side. So I'm back on the Alliance side uh, and decide to uh, swap in my uh, warrior, who is somewhat better geared and is actually my second main, uh, uh, just for the final boss. And she gets it too. Uh, so this thing, it was ultra rare for the last, uh, you know, 15 or 20 weeks, uh, all of a sudden is dropping left and right, and apparently all for me. Yeah, lucky you. So I Aren't have now you two characters. the lucky one. Am I the lucky one? Ah, yeah. So, yeah, so I now have two characters. One of them has the uh, axe already and really was not qualified for it, so that final boss was really tough for a lesser geared character, but... Uh, New yes. one hopefully will be better. Congratulations, we got the World of Warcraft story out of the way. Yeah, um, so anyway, uh, I think the drop rate in that has increased, but apparently it's only for me. Yay. Wonderful. So that was uh, that was my week, is after weeks of saying, yeah, okay, the patch is kind of over, and there's not much to do, and it's all doing the same stuff over and again, over again. All of a sudden, it's, you know, it's like, oh my God, things have to be done right now. Yes. Uh, in addition, they dropped a, a thing called Plunderstorm, which is an alternate way of playing sort of, kind of, but not really World of Warcraft. No, um, it really isn't World of Warcraft. It's a... Uh, it's a, it's a uh, what do they call that? Uh, uh, Battle Royale. Yeah, it's a Battle Royale. Battle Royale. And Lori's been playing a lot of that. I played just a little with her. Um, so, I'm not good at yeah, it. Yeah, Fortnite so of Warcraft. Mm -hmm. So it's only for two weeks, apparently, because it's a Fortnite. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. Maybe. And... Uh, the third thing that's going on is they introduced a new meta achievement, so we suddenly decided we had to do all the things we haven't done this expansion uh, to get the meta. <coughs> yes. So our time has been full of wow. Yes, we wowed it. When we weren't going, uh, we actually went to the uh, Balboa Park yesterday to uh, take photographs and walk around. Yeah, Lori said, let's, let's go down to the zoo. And... Uh, uh, and yeah. which is at Balboa Park. Which is at Balboa Park in San Diego. Ooh, we have a new follower! Yay! Mariciel. Mariciel, thank you for following. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, we drove down to San Diego, went to our favorite Greek uh, restaurant, if you're ever in San Diego, the uh, Olympic Cafe on University is amazing. Uh, and then went down to Balboa Park, and Lori says, uh, we parked in the zoo parking lot, but Lori says, oh, let's go, uh, let's go walk around Balboa and take some pictures first. So we did that for a couple hours, and then, uh, well, what time does the zoo close? Uh, close at 7, it was like 5 then, and I said, okay, we'll do the zoo now, and they uh, scan our badges and says, oh, uh, those don't work. We're on spring break, and we're not taking the annual passes. So, so it's a good thing we didn't try to go to the zoo first. We would have been quite disappointed. Tim says that uh, his friend's been playing WoW since 2004 and has thousands of days, yes, days, on multiple <coughs> characters. And uh, we don't want to tell you how many days we have, yeah, but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. let's just okay, say, let's just say a, it translates to years. Spammer. A spammer, okay. Okay. Is there an L on the end? Roselle, yeah, it looks like it. Okay, one message deleted by a moderator. Yep. All right, spammer despammed. Yes. I don't know. I somehow don't think the bot really is is sorry for bothering you. Yeah. I don't know. I just skimmed the message and read it. Yeah, so. I don't think it's sorry for bothering us at all. So. Uh, Bots probably don't have a lot of emotion about it. Yeah, this. so... Uh, there's been much talk about the uh, death of adventure games and why adventure games went away. Uh, yes, and somebody does remember the Monty Python spam, 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 spam a lot. Spam a lot. Yes. Spam a lot from the the uh, uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. In spam a lot. Bots were capable of feeling. I'd be much more worried. Yes. There has been a discussion that with AI. Uh, you uh -huh. know, do they really have uh, feelings and emotions? And uh, it's kind of. Maybe. Mm. After all, they can get pretty pissy at some of those, con yeah. those uh, things. This is not Conquests of Camelot Stream. Oh, I see. I find it, though, yeah. What was the... Uh, uh, Ooh, you know? a thousand plus followers now. Well done. Thank you. Well, it was very important they got that follower. Yeah. Hooray. Yeah. Kenyoni. Yeah. 
<coughs> so at any rate, we're oh. very, uh, we've been back trying to get active. Corey's still relatively sick. And today, being, you know, a spring in California, it's raining, which is not usual. Oh, but I was talking about the Death of Adventure games. You were. Oh, okay. So Old Man Murray... I uh, had a post of uh, why did adventure games die, and uh, they basically his conclusion was suicide, and he talked about the uh, infamous cat mustache puzzle in uh, one of the uh, Gabriel Knight games, uh, and uh, but my theory was that it's Blizzard Entertainment, uh, and not because of World of Warcraft, but before that, when uh, Blizzard came out with uh, Starcraft. Uh, they provided modding tools that allowed you to make your own scenarios and such. Uh, and my son uh, played uh, StarCraft, and then one of the uh, mods that came out was called Brood War. And I noticed that for a solid year, maybe two, he, uh, this guy, this kid of ours who had played all sorts of games, played absolutely nothing but Brood War. Saw no reason to buy any other game. And... That uh, I said, okay, the problem here is that Blizzard Entertainment is making games that are so immersive that people don't need another game. One game is a lifetime. Uh, and uh, certainly that's the case with World of Warcraft. Is uh, uh, We have done a couple things. There was a law at one point in World of Warcraft where we and everybody in our guild switched off to play uh, Star Wars The Old Republic. And we did that for six months or so and then came back to World of Warcraft. Uh, yeah, Stockfryer says, StarCraft map editor was amazing. Took me months to make my first RPG with Bra Dragon Ball Z. Uh, Bill Kuhn says, adventure games are not dead by any means, and I don't think they're even declining. Yes, and that's another counter-argument. I think it's just moving toward the games made by smaller companies, even very small companies. Uh, yeah, so adventure games were in decline for a while in the early 2000s, uh, and that had a lot to do with companies uh, uh, basically discovering that the cost of making adventure games had skyrocketed because everything was custom art, custom animation, uh, and you know voice acting and filling up CDs. And then a game like Doom came, uh, a game like Doom came along uh, and had very low quality uh, resources, but people didn't care because they liked the uh, visceral excitement of it. Uh, and so, for a while, first-person shooters took over the industry from adventure games. But, in the meantime, uh, things like uh, uh, The Longest Day, Longest Night, uh, and stuff like that came along. And there have been a lot of people making adventure games all along. And some of them are, you know, quite good and quite popular. Uh, and, of course, uh, Wajidai Games, uh, Dave Gilbert, came in and uh, started out as a very niche, but uh, did his... Uh, Blackwell uh, Chronicles games, and they became popular. And then uh, recently with, uh, what was the, uh, on something. Recently came out with a game that Nara really, Sial. Uh, really Nara went viral. Nara Ciel says hello, and we'll say hello back. Uh, hello, Nara Ciel. We're glad she could, they, could, they could chat with us, yes. Oh, so your Brainiac avoids MMOs partly because monthly fees instead of one and done payment yeah. annoys me and worries about potential addictive issues and in general prefers single player. I generally play my multiplayer games single player. Yeah, so, so when we know. played Star Wars The Old Republic, you know, there were other players wandering around. Yeah, they're just distractions. They're, they're, they're just a part of the background. Yeah, uh -huh. They're part of the atmosphere. Right. And uh, Tim says, uh, what would you define as an adventure game, strictly speaking, nowadays? So many open world <coughs> games have adventure aspects. Well, the only thing that really separates the adventure game from the RPG is... Uh, to me, the character, what, who are you playing? Are you playing a fixed character that is, that's going through an adventure? And it doesn't matter if that fixed character is, uh, you know, slightly uh, modifiable, but the story remains centered around that character and you don't choose other characters to play. To me, that makes the big <coughs> difference. It has a plot that you're trying to find. Yeah, and, and I would go that way, the plot, is that an adventure game has a story that you're playing through, and you're solving puzzles along the way in order to, uh, you know, get through the, uh, uh, the blockage points of the story. But basically, you're playing through a story, and once you're done with it, you're pretty much done with it. That is the game. And you can go back and play it 
uh, for fun and, you know, you know, get some of the more dialogue and so on. Basically, once we played an adventure game, we played it. With a role-playing game, uh, it's more open-ended and there may be... Multiple tasks. There may technically be a goal to it, but it really isn't about the goal. It's about all the things you're doing along the way and the, you know, the combat and gaining skills and stuff like that. Uh, shooter games are basically... <coughs> Uh, generally reset at the beginning of each session so you don't retain your stats and skills like you do in role-playing games and instead it's just the you know excitement of uh, combat and uh, exploration and killing things yes and uh, Arlo says it would be nice to see some kind of adventure game engine that lets you cut down the cost of production like having millions of art pieces to drag and drop to create <coughs> unique rooms or something uh, yeah, everybody's tried to do things like that. Yeah, I mean, and there's the uh, the division between, uh, you know, fan game, uh, indie game, uh, high-end indie game, and AAA. <coughs> uh, the question is, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to make money making the game, or are you trying to have fun with it? Uh, and if you're making it for fun, and it's basically a fan game, and no problem. You can do it with clip art. You can, uh, you know, there's all kinds of resources available in Unity. Uh, lots of stuff available. And you can take an adventure game engine uh, that's uh, uh, like Adventure Game Studio. <coughs> and use, you know, use AI art or a clip art. And you got a game. Uh, but you're not going to actually uh, get people immersed enough into that to give you the bucks that will pay for the time you, you spent doing it. Unless you're a really good storyteller and it gets caught by the right person. Yeah. So if you're, you know, if you're in business, it's a different matter than if you're making a game for fun. Uh, Brainiac says one of the best arguments you see about <coughs> adventure games disappearing is they were basically disseminated through the industry as plot character writing became more capable in all genres rather than having to make a choice like how... LucasArts put out adventure and action versions of their Indiana Jones game. Well, that version of action and adventure was really early in their decision-making process. So they really were testing out uh, what, you know, the, <coughs> how, how to sell games and what would appeal to their audience. And, and it was also trying to make good use of their license yeah. and say, okay, what yeah. does Indiana Jones do in the movies? Okay, let's try and get that the flavor of that into the game. Yeah. Let's see, and yeah, a good answer. Thank you. I wasn't sure how many other uh, adventure games just evolved into other genres. I think we just took the best, like everything else. Everybody borrowed from the games they loved, and it just simply spread. You took the best parts, the things you cared about when you went to make a game, and then you incorporated it in whatever you were doing. Yeah, so... Um, uh and puzzle games were their own beasts as well. See the fool's errand. Yes. What's uh? Let's see. Uh, main author of uh, Monkey Island. See if I can make it. Oh, you mean Ron, Gilbert. Ron Gilbert. Ron Gilbert, as opposed to Dave Gilbert or Tim Schafer. Uh, uh, Ron Gilbert uh, told us at one point that he borrowed some of the best things from Heroes Quest uh, when he made Secret of Monkey Island, and we loved Secret of Monkey Island. That to us is yeah. kind of the pinnacle of adventure game achievement. Um. We, in turn, borrowed a couple things from Secret of Monkey Island when we made Quest for Glory 2. So, you know, uh, it, it does go back and forth. Uh, uh, the people do play each other's games and, and learn from them. So sure, I feel like Quest for Glory had a huge <coughs> impact on other games. Well, we certainly hope so. We would like to think that at some point we were, you know, something that everybody played who was playing games, and therefore, yeah. Um, and so we're all playing World of Warcraft now, but the World of Warcraft designers were influenced by Quest for Glory right. very heavily. Yes. It's very clear that at least some of them played the game <laughs> and uh, kept some of that feel. I mean, the fact that the gnomes are all quirky and funky and, and, and crazy characters. Uh, and uh, this is all good. We're really happy. It becomes part of our, you know, the... Uh, the world view that we're all in. It's nice to think that we're all working together. Um, are you having any frame rate problems since we've got a couple? Yeah, we've got a couple streams going in the background. So uh, if you uh, notice any frame rate problems, let us know and we can cut our streams. Yes. 
So at any rate, we should probably, uh, and people did say they wanted to see us play the game, so we should get the game running too. Um, an open world game, day and night cycles, a living, breathing feel to it. It was a conceptual and immersive leap. I raved about it. Well, of course, we were coming from the, you know, one of, ta from tabletop games, which is an open world. It wasn't restricted. It very seldom had the, the plots that you had to follow and figure out because, you know, players are uh, definitely playing cats. You know, cats will do what they will, and so do players. We need a spin-off quest for Glory where you play either Elsa or Katrina and you play their stories. Yeah, somebody brought that up the other day and it would be interesting, especially the Irana, other ones. Yeah. Yes, Irana in particular, I think, would be interesting. Uh, we have not checked out Baldur's Gate 3. Yeah. Uh, I've heard quite a bit of wonderful things about it, but uh, we're too busy playing WoW. Yeah, the problem with Elsa's story is Elsa's story kind of gets told an awful lot in the Quest for Glory games, even though she's peripheral to you. Yeah, you never actually see her, but you learn a lot about her. Right, and her story... Oh, Elsa, I was thinking Arana, I'm sorry. Yeah, Arana, though, Arana has done so much that you never saw. You only got the rumors about, and her story could be very interesting. Although, again, you're stuck in a... Uh, uh, the the fallacy for certain um, television stories and movies where you know that the fate that they're going to undergo is not a good one. And once again, yeah, advertising our Patreon problem. that uh, you should all be uh, members of because our uh, income has gone down. We were making about nine fifty to a thousand a month. Now it's only about six sixty. But uh, in there, uh, we have some posts from our previous uh, quest log blog. Uh, and if you search for it, somewhere in here is the Women of Quest for Glory. Yes. I need to way, set up threads. Back. Yeah. Um, and Lori talks about Katrina and Elsa and Arana uh, and Nawar and so on. And uh, uh, that's all in here. There's a lot of stuff in our... Uh, so you should go to our Patreon, whether or not you're a patron, but you should also become a patron. <laughs> okay. Somewhere around here is a search button. Yes, you found it before. But uh, so, at any rate, what I was trying to say is yeah, uh, right. stories like um, Star Wars when they did the prequels. The problem with the prequels is we all knew that the prequels had to end in tragedy. That the tragedy was that the main character of the prequels was going to have a terrible thing happen to them, and the main character of Arana's story, where we would want to leave, you know, we'd want our early days, but we'd know we were heading to the big confrontation in Mordavia, and that ends in effectively tragedy for the character, which is not all that fun a uh, uh, a uh, thing. So there's one of our uh, posts, one of Lori's posts about uh, the women of Quest for Glory, and this is uh, One Light in the Darkness, Arana's Peace, uh, which goes along with our uh, cover, uh, Illo, for today's stream. Uh, and, but you're yeah, right, Arlo, we had not developed Aziza very much, and Aziza would be a fine character to go off of because we don't know her past, or at least her story is not told. And she has a story. Why is she this prissy old, well, young woman? She's not that old. But there's prissy wizard living in there. And she has no, you know, uh, uh, future there, really. She's just in steady state. So something has to kick her butt somewhere and get her out to have at her adventure. Yeah, so Lori originally basically, uh, you know, painted her as, uh, you know, broad strokes. Uh, is that she's, uh, you know, the Miss Manners character. She's yes. all about, uh, you know, propriety and, uh, you know, English tea with a, uh, uh, a gentle lady and that you have to... Uh, mind uh, your manners. Mind your manners. Yes. Um, and then I think Lori came up with the name first and then I came up with the riddle around Aziza. No, her name was 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 about the riddle. Knowing that we, I had to have the riddle, mm. I came up with her name. So, yeah. Uh, so we used to tell each other riddles and, uh, uh, you know, give each other riddles. Uh, and that was just a fun thing we did. My, my favorite was the one I came up with uh, where the answer was scintillate. Uh, and you can imagine what the, uh, what the riddle was, but... Uh, uh, you know, we did these just for fun, and uh, 
So brought these into the game because we thought other people would enjoy them too. Yes. I think the problem with the prequels were that they were executed poorly, D-O-L, on them, yes. And uh, not that you already knew the end of the story. It's a little like, everybody knows the end of Hamlet from the title, but it's, yes, that's true. But to me, I want my main character, you know, to be heroic. I didn't feel like the, the prequels actually did uh, Anakin star, uh, justice and that only when we get into the Clone Wars and that do we, uh, the, the animated series, do we actually justify what happened to Anakin and why he became Darth Vader. And at that point, we have good storytelling. So you're right, it's mostly that they were poorly told, but it's also that when you go back and you have to write those things, you know that you have to lead up to a great tragedy. Yeah. And it should be a tragedy. And the story of an entire life is complicated. Yeah. Uh, so trying to you know tell the Darth Vader origin story uh, when you've just got you know a few minutes here and there in a movie uh, is hard to do. Yeah. So you really only get get kind of a summary of the uh, the life. All right, should we go play a game? I guess so. We have done our. It's already uh, ten minutes past two thirty. Oh no. Corey will play. We have reached five hours of playing this game. What do you know? Of course, you need to set the, the thing so that you can actually see what we're doing. All right. Uh, desktop. Mm -hmm. And we have DOS box. And we have DOS box. Okay. And. And then it's uh, Control Enter or Alt Enter or one of those or maybe it. Uh, okay, well I played the intro instead. Okay. We'll all get that pop. -up. Then it'll be too loud. Yeah, it sounds too loud. Look, it's the first bug. Yes. That's Initiate special. That is definitely Initiate design. All of this. That's all Initiate art style. Yes. Oh. oh, you can't get out of that. Okay. I, it. Too, uh, I don't know. Might have to start over. Uh, cancel. No. Do you think DOSBox accurately simulates the Sound Blaster ad lib card? Uh, I'm trying to see if I can. Reload your thing? No. I'll kind of try to type. Slash quit, but okay, we're going to quit the game. All right, with our slice of quiche, which isn't bad because we like quiche. And it took us all the way out. Yes, it did. So rude. <laughs> yes, we know how to play this game clearly. Controls come up with in the uh, late eighties. Those horns were quite interesting. Let's start. Yes. Quest. Let's see. Uh, I think it does a reasonable job of it, considering the documentation available. And, and people who played the game think it does. But it was better to get a Roland em emulator. This is not imitating the Roland sounds. Yes. Yes, and it depended upon your speakers. Ah, yes, we are here. We are back in the game. All right, sound has been turned down. We can we can challenge the weapon master. Our to character see. sheet. There is our character sheet. Our we health have is a little bit ew, low, but we have full low. stamina. Okay. He's not going to kill ah, us. Ah, so lovely a game, says Mystical Alexis. Thank you. Thank you. There's Will Riker again. It is. I'm pretty impressive, impressed with that design. My speaker was a literal PC squeaker, yes. 
Incredible what that uh, beeper could do. Yes. Yes. All right. On guard. And just keep, keep dot. You will not dodge. Just dodge. He said don't, don't ever use your weapon. Just dodge and, and block so you can get your Oop. skills up. There's no way of telling what you how well this is going though. Yeah, we're being knocked pushed backwards slowly. Yes, I know, but you really should have had at least a a, a stamina gauge or something. That's not good uh, uh, inner fort base, I think. Um, Farah says it might be a case like uh, CRT where it was written written to be optimized for different hardware rather than what we use now. You fight like a dairy farmer. That's fine, because you fight like a cow. <laughs> ho, ha, ha! Turn, parry, dodge, spin! Ah, thrust! Yes. Mighty blow. <laughs> Listen, where is you down, and you become exhausted. <sighs> Good way to start the day. <laughs> Even as we fought, I could detect your skills improving through practice. Well, at least we gave you something. When I was a kid grinding this, I it would spam a, whatever I wanted to level up. <laughs> it was most prudent you should give in to my superior skill. So we made uh, Lorian, Lorian Michelle made the Weapon Master really a jerk in the yes, uh, books. Yes, in the books, yes. You tell me a little bit. If you would like a stretcher, my weak, tired friend, you seem a shadow of the person who began this little lesson. Should we meet again, I would not be averse, misspelled, to another go round. Farewell, friend. People have complained about that misspelling. Well, Corey complains about it too. No, so. people complain to us. And so I, I understand it. it, but you would complain anyway if you were doing uh, this. So we yes, need sir. the uh, control S is the character sheet, not control C. We have one out of 48 wow, stamina points. Yeah, just really. Because that wore us out. But, but on the other hand, our parry and dodge both went up. Yay! What right. news didn't. Yeah, and now we're tired. And now we have no stamina to do anything. But it is important to uh, get those parry and dodge skills up because you might actually survive uh, some combat a little more. Hey, up to six stamina points. Yeah. We could work out in the stables, but uh, we first did. of all, it'll take us tonight. Out, yep. I think we started out. Okay, control T. It is mid morning, so we don't certainly don't want to do the stables right now because they'll take us all night. All uh -huh. day. But we have had our little lesson. I am the tired. <laughs> Throws rock two hours later of spamming this. My dad looked into the room. Are you winning, son? <laughs> uh, are you having fun yet? I would say. That was always my Let's problem. Let's see. We're getting healing. We have uh, one potion of healing left. Okay. Oh, we were getting the stuff. We've got a magic ape corn, and we've got... Uh, well, let's go uh, see if we can get some information what we need. Yeah, we know what we need. We got that information from... Uh, yes, the, but not having written it down. Ah, well, all right. Ask about the spell potion. Mm -hmm. Still needs fairy dust, green fur, flowers from Rana's piece. Magic. Oh, we haven't given her any of the things, so we no, can give we her some of the things. You, you should give it when you got it all, I think. No, then you got to carry it all around and it's a yeah. weight. Oh, well. Can you give them? Uh, I don't know. Fairy dust, green fur. Remember those? Okay, you got those memories? Fairy dust and green fur. Flowers from Rana's piece, magic acorn, flying water. Okay, and we have Alaska water, give some mushrooms. Water. Otter. Otter water. Okay, she's flying water. How clever. All right. The... Okay. Uh, we don't we have, have fairy dust. We have a magic acorn. Yes, we do have the magic acorn. And some mushrooms. Mm -hmm. Give mushrooms. They're very nice. I'll dry them and grind them. Oh, yes, they're worth the gold. Here you are. All right, good. Um, uh, acorn. Ah, so you helped the dryad. That's nice. She does keep the forest around here healthy. So that's how to make a dispel potion, is it? Thanks for letting me know. 
Let's see, I still need the green fur and the fairy dust and flowers from Marauder's Peace. Well, let's go get some of those things. Yes. Now oh, those dupli AI duplicate voice are a thing. I look forward to giving uh, Gary Owen's voice to the remaining Space Quest games. Yes, indeed. That's that's just needs to be there, yes. Um, of course, uh, the... Uh, oh, well, I found Gary Owen's voice. Uh, we were listening to Gary Owen's voice long before on... on uh, so he was a very... He's down the points are down. Ooh, this guy's tough. Yeah. It's a brigand, not a goblin. Can you take your help? I don't weapon? think you can do that during uh, combat. Oh, well, then you're out of luck. You better run, then. No, he's dying. Oh, he's dying. Yeah, you've got him. I got him a couple of good times. Although he might get you first. He might. Wow. Barely. Well, now we might have to return to uh, town and rest. Yeah. Or buy some more uh, fine. All right. I remember Harik in Quest for Glory 2 gives you three potions, but I was only aware of needing one for the caged beast. And in the ending sequence, it says uh, he prepared one for the Saurus, which means he suggested that's an additional one. Was there a need for the, for the other two? Did I miss something? I don't think so. I don't remember, actually. So this is one of the differences between an RPG and an adventure game is you would not be sitting here having to rest over and over again in an adventure time. game. That would be a... But you did, okay. Uh, whereas you really need to in here because this is a simulation game. And uh, too impatient to rest right now, that means that we did it enough times and or our stamina isn't that, or isn't that uh, low again. My head cannon is despite the Saurus not having any hair, you sometimes obtained a, a hair of Arus al Din and mixed it into the potion. I thought the Saurus just had green hair. Oh, okay. Well, there we go. Okay, put them safely away and then we can eat a fruit. We have well, some we flowers. We decided that the fruit didn't do anything for us. Shut up. I know, I don't like that. It was supposed to. Maybe it, maybe it does in the VJ version. Could be. Go to the tree and pick some. Okay. Hmm. We are unfortunately out of healing potions. It, it, it restores your stamina, doesn't it? It should have restored to full is my problem. Yeah, it certainly didn't do much, and it will not allow us to eat again. No. Somebody's already been working at it. Oh, uh, the Gary Owens voice and things like it. And, huh. Overdubbing the uh, CR games. It's uncanny. Wow. Piffle boots. Where are Duffel's boots? I kind of stutter stepped and didn't you get did, away. You did, you did. Fortunately, you're right near Serana's piece, so. You can run away. Mm. Uh oh. It's getting close. Too hard to tell. He's going to get you. You might die. I haven't saved you for a while. You didn't. Then you died. Oh well. We'll have to restore to before we started the session because I didn't save it all. You didn't. Deal. A bad player. Bad player. Poke that shoulder. Yeah. He poked us to death. If it doesn't restore stamina, then it replaces your need to eat rations for the day. Yeah, so it saves you that. Yes. Save early, save often. Yes, we, we, we forget our cardinal rules of gameplay. And now we have to do it all over again because we're dumb. We're not good at this game. Yes. Don't do a murder. Yeah. Classic problem. Glad to know even experts forget to say. Now remember, we are never... No, we, we're not actually experts at play. We're only... It's even in our game. You're probably more of an expert at this game than we are. He's doing a lot of dodging. Dodging. And you're... 
Okay. We Let's see if we did better or worse than the previous time. Yeah, we'll have to see. We still yet to get, get his, his dialogue. Yes. Cool. S. No, not yet. Hands off. We have no. a dragon cursor. Yep. Okay. All right. This time we got we our dodge up and but you didn't, uh, didn't get any parry. But I got some weapon you use. You did get weapon use, yes. You're more patient than I am. When this used to happen to me when I was seven playing these games, I would beat the computer up and the, my mom would yell at me. Yeah, I agree. Oh, yeah. we. Uh, I think the first time we did this, we uh, quit in a rage. Yes. Uh, uh, the uh, Quest for Glory 2 uh, VJ version, which is a lot of fun from uh, HGDI, uh, that uh, I forgot to save entirely. Uh, and uh, got killed uh, out in the uh, desert and realized I had no save games to restore to. And so I just quit that in a rage. So, yeah. Has anyone ever done a no-save run of Quest for Glory Worm? I haven't heard of it, but that's... That's a reasonable thing to do. It's not that tough if you're just playing it real. If you just take your time with it. I would assume speed runs, but it's hard to say. Yes, they don't want to die, but they're not going to do the whole game. So they're more, they're not quick. Uh, Should we buy a bigger potion? I could. You could. Uh, that's only 20 silvers. Yeah, you could get several of Which those. is two gold. Undead Unguin, 100 silvers. Uh, buy Vigor Potion. Ah, the uh, 500 point speedruns regularly save for RNG manipulation. I didn't know they did that. Okay, Undead Unguin is used. To drive off the minor undead, such as zombies or floating spirits. It doesn't last long, so you would only use it when you are anticipating an encounter with such things, therefore being a totally useless thing for most purposes. Because it's always, you never use it until it's too late. Uh, Except in our game. Yes. So I guess you just buy the undead on Gwyn. You don't need to give her materials for that? I guess so. Yes, it's, it's only the spell potions that we're working on. Ah, I keep getting stuck in the centaur. Sorry, we didn't mean to bother you. We didn't mean to rump, uh, bump into your rump horse. Yes. All 500 point runs need a troll and a cheetar, and you're pretty unlikely to get them first try in the source. I see. So you're trying to, yes. We've played, uh, what is it, uh, the rogue game. Uh, the, the traditional old-fashioned rogue was definitely you wanted to make sure you had the RNG on your on your side. You did not actually get it. Eh, your stamina sucks. You did not rest. You're going to die here. No, I'm not. I'm going to run away. Bravely run away, Sir Robin. On the fact that it's hard to run when you're exhausted. Uh -huh. And back to the centaur, which being a special screen, uh, I mentioned last uh, time that uh, uh, any of the special screens where you've got uh, you know something unique rather than generic forest, uh, y the combatants do not follow you in because we simply didn't have the memory to run combat in these screens. Oh, it's going to stop. But okay. you need to rest. Uh, so let us rest multiple times. And save the game. Because we've given Oh, I did save uh, right here. Oh, you did? Uh, yes, I can save again after resting. Cheetar is only around at night in that scenario. Ah, yes. Okay, so too impatient to rest because I'm at half stamina. Hmm. Maybe they been hanging out too long. Drink a bigger potion. The drink is invigorating. That took me up to full, and maybe it would have even without yes, the rest. Yes, it probably would have. All right. Drink. Healing potion. That's kind of a waste. All right, we're full. Fully healed. All fully right, rested. So why don't we just save, that? save again. We'll just uh, save on top of the previous one. Gathering dispel mats. <laughs> save. 
In my head, can the forest baddies wouldn't come so close to the city because of the sheriff and his big bud. It's nice to think that that's the real truth and that the sheriff actually is pretty good. At least Otto is good at enforcing. So I should be walking instead of running. Well, we'll get through it quicker this way. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Ah, it's just a saurus. All right. I'm just going to poke and poke and poke and not defend at all. You do that. Because I was told by fans that I don't know if they have anything on them. What a waste. No treasure. Is it here or do I have to go to the right? I don't remember. Otto versus Crusher. Who would win? Crusher. Crusher's mean. Otto, if he's enraged, can do some serious damage. But Crusher goes out of his way to be nasty. He enjoys it. Did you get five? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Stamina good, health good. Open use went up. Agility went up. Yay! Um, I don't want to bother saving Still again. Still burn smackdown! Sure, we'll just keep overriding that. Ah! If Crusher messes with Otto's yo yo, yes, Otto's yo yo would probably beam him. Yep. Anyone remember what else I'm looking for? Uh, magic mushrooms and. Queen fur. Yes, making things loud is bad for business. Yeah, they wouldn't want that fight, but it wouldn't happen in the bar because Otto wouldn't go in the bar because the sheriff has told Otto not to go near the bar. There's a spore. Seed spitting spirea, spitting and we already spirea, got one of those yeah. for the uh, dryad. So. Yeah, so it's not spitting anymore. There's only one spore. Yeah, spit. so I think we kind of like, you know, killed that entire uh, species. Uh, uh, it just takes a while. Oh, bring in, bring in. One away. Well, I think you can fight him. Okay. Throw. You're a roar. Rock at Brigand. Throw. Throw. Uh, do I have any daggers? We'll throw another rock. It could not escape. You didn't even damage him. But if I see if I keep poking, he doesn't get any moves in. And that is why. Uh, the game was not designed that way, but that's the way it came out. And this is why the game was designed to kind of alternate between attacking and defending. Uh, but you can't really accurately do that. And so the idea is to uh, basically overwhelm the opponent by attacking so quickly that... Uh... And I haven't actually figured out how to fight these goblins. Fight, goblin. You'll fight all right. Oh, we did. And two of them. Two of them, and you're hurt. And, and we didn't. Die. Uh, and you're going to die. Yep, sure and did. You didn't heal. I mean, you didn't save after I, the last fight. No. But that's fine, because that's why we were damaged. I think you improved the battle mode a lot with Quest for Glory 2. Ah, uh, that's his favorite, yeah. I'm glad. We well, I mean, I really worked at it. I mean, Quest for Glory 2, I, I made it so that uh, there's an invisible advantage, uh, or not very visible advantage, to mixing up your moves, and that it counts uh, the amount of time uh, between attacks. Uh, and basically says, effectively, if you're taking more time between attacks, uh, then you have... Uh, uh, you know, plan your attacks, and so you get a point. higher success rate. I think I have a dagger. Don't have any. Nope. The rock didn't do any damage. Yep. Throw rock at brigand because I have no throwing skill to speak of. Okay. Okay, we're just going to thrust, 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 thrust. No, you're getting him. And see, he's not attacking because he's... Uh, he's having to block. Yeah, he's uh, trying to block my attacks, and my attacks are coming faster than he can block. So that is a exploit. Mm -hmm. not, a, not intended in the design. 
Phoenix has the, the up arrow is broken on his keyboard, making it difficult to fight. Oh. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, did you save the game? No. After having actually had a major encounter? It wasn't much of an encounter. All right, so let us go see our control. There we go. We have a brigand coming up. And we have enough stamina's points. down a little bit, but I have been walking more than throwing around. went up from that, though. That useless rock throw did something. I didn't see you. Yes, this. actually, agility is a far more useful stat. Yeah. Did you think of the paladin class? Yes, when making Quest for Glory 1 and decided to save it for 2, or did he just come up I don't with have any more rocks. Oh, well, you'll need to pick up some rocks. Um, did we think of it? We certainly thought it in relationship, since I had associated Al ID with uh, uh, the uh, um, Iranian Persian cultures, Arabian. anyway, coming out of that. So the Arabian Nights, yep. Arabian Nights. I knew it wasn't an Arabian Nights story. It was much later than Arabian yeah. Nights, but I had okay. thought about yeah. it. And so, yes, it was going to be purely for two. We won't... I'm and... trying to stop. Stopping is hard. All right, green. Oh, I like this game since Valiant Cheese. <laughs> oh, I'm glad. Okay, I only right. had one Vigor Potion. All right, I guess you uh, should we're have mostly got, healed. Should have got another Rest. one. Yes. Uh, they're and expensive. Pick, that was two gold per potion. Okay, we need pick to save up, up some rocks. Okay, uh, get rocks. We they're everywhere. If attack in Quartz for Glory 2 would be successful, but I find it more useful to dodge and parry. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's good to know that it really worked. I want to know where you heard of paladins coming from Arabia. No, I can't find that ref reference for that. It was a book um, uh, that I had read that my mother owned. It was written in the 40s or 30s and 40s. And uh, uh, it had a paladin. It, it talked about becoming a paladin effectively. And, and that's where I got it from. And uh, nobody seems to know that book, so. It's just what you get, yeah? Oh. Yeah, I'll fight all right. Okay, these guys are supposed to be easy. But we're taking a fair amount of damage. We're taking some damage here. Well, there were two of them at the same time. Yes. A fiction book. It was a fiction book. a clever line that I missed. Oh, was it? Yes. So there's nowhere to go. He doesn't need the money anymore. Yep, he doesn't even have This poor slob. Yeah, loser at the poker game. Doesn't even have lunch money. Tisk. So we could fight these guys endlessly, but we'll have more and more of them. And, uh... and he actually had a, a, a goal. He was trying to go to the meeps. Yeah, so I'm trying to figure out where they are. Off to the left somewhere. Okay, and you found him. Where would that be? Uh... That's Brock. Oh. And a... Greek meat. Remember this? I didn't either. Yay! Hi hiya, hiya! Nice to see you again. For green fur. Oh, you want some green fur? I think I have some green fur somewhere around here. Or is that an apple? Or is that another apple core? Evidently, meeps like apples. Oh, there's some. Hey, there you go. Hope it helps you. We have to get it. I'm not sure if we can get around the rocks and the meeps. Ah, parsing was such a drag. I never finished the original quest for glory one. That's what we thought. Well, I, yeah. I was happy to go for to point click. Paladin compared to fighter is definitely more powerful, at least in the quest for glory five with the paladin sword. 
Yeah, we wanted the Paladin to be, you know, the uh, hero class, I guess they were calling it in WoW and other games. He, it's definitely the, the uh, advanced class. So Lori wrote almost all the dialogue in the games, but hiya, hiya, pleased to meet you. That was mine. Yeah, that's a Cory special. Uh, I hope I'm healthy enough for this, because well, I'm not. No. If I keep, poke, if I keep poking, poking, maybe he... Poking fast enough. Yes, you got him. Oh, he got a hit poking. Still need an actual run of just the fighter. I always transition to Paladin after two. Yeah. I think uh, game three is okay for uh, warriors and not just. 12 out of 50 satellite. I use a healing potion when I try to get to town. I can certainly rest. Cool tea, mid afternoon. Try to get to the castle and uh, do some work in the stables. Green yeah. meat for MVP of the western half of the Spielberg ah, Valley. Oh, look. <gasps> wow. Cat mushrooms. All the pretty mushrooms. Pretty pink. Okay. I've done that. Now, do we need to deal with the fairies or do we need fairy dust? You do need fairy dust, but you've got to wait till night. Do you have a flask, an empty flask? No, probably not. Control I. I you have three empty flasks. Yes, yeah, so, because I drank all those healing okay. potions. Uh, I, healing potion, I have one potion of healing left. Bears who care say, it's cool to see you and Lori play in your own games after all these years. I wonder why it's uh, something game companies don't realize anymore. I'm going to drink my last healing potion. You are? Okay. It goes down smoothly. You're going to need food, though. Okay, what's the time? Uh, you could come back at night. Yeah, it's getting there. Yeah, because we ate the fruit. Uh huh. Uh, control T. It's mid afternoon. We got okay, towards night time. Well, mid afternoon is not night time though. No, we're still okay. gathering the spell mats. Yes. Okay, so you think we said we needed fairy dust? Yes, we do need fairy dust. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, part of it, of course, is, you know, uh, when you're making these games, you play through sections of it over and over and over again. If I were if I were programming this uh, scene, you know, I would have been fine-tuning it and testing it and finding bugs. And, uh, you know, so that's, you spend hours on one scene. Um, and actually playing through the game, you don't have the leisure for that when you're making the games. So, <coughs> plus the fact that it's been 30-some years, uh, yeah. Uh, 89, Toga, so Mario. 35 years. I know years. that feeling still, still working on Space Venture. Oh, boy. <coughs> yes. Uh, and Valiant says, another factor is how many people still work for the studios that made their games 35 years ago. Yes. Not many people are there still. And if they are, well, more power to them. And usually it means they're in a good position because, yeah. Modern games don't have the personal touch of these games. Modern games do not have a central designer who gets credit for these games. Well, some of them do. Okay, so the one who did the uh, latest Lara Croft adventure was uh, uh, Rihanna Pratchett, uh, Terry Pratchett's daughter, and she got credit for that. Well, okay, go ahead. I don't know where I am or where I'm wandering around. Most game companies do not, but she was actually a name after all. Yes, she was a name before she did it because her father. Yes, you need to fall in love with your baby the way we... You, ha you need to have some actual autonomy in actually doing your game so that it isn't just a big group project, which so many games are. I mean, World of Warcraft has some key designers, but they really are, a lot of them are just the team effort. And... Uh, so therefore, you don't have one Artur who's doing these things. Yeah, you have. There she is. Let's see if the vibe comes out. Oh, 
uh, Stardew Valley, of course, there are uh, indies that still do that and really are the authors. Oh. I do like the little trill for the dried place. I think that's cool. Yes, it's very nice. Way more solo devs out there making games than there are the big studios. Well, yeah, but there are a lot of solo devs out there. See. Yeah, Hope you, know, you like, have a great yeah. weekend, Sister Toga, and we'll see you at the Tacoma Convention in a few months, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, hopefully. I promise some video she never gave it. Oh, look at that thing. Yeah. You see rocks, grass, yeah. and an Antwerp. What's an Antwerp? Antwerp. Are we in Belgium? They're on the endangered species list. They are rarely seen. And singularly ugly. So these were uh, inspired by a kid's toy. And our uh, artist, uh, Jeff Crow, uh, younger brother of Mark Crow, uh, came up with the idea for them. Yes. He, uh, we had the artists make their own personal monsters. We don't actually have any reason to attack the Antwerp, do we? Um, well, other than the getting killed. Now, yes, you're already answering that. before I even asked. Yes. The, um, and Antwerp is a funny word. That is the reason why this is the Antwerp. And because the Antwerp certainly... Sold. Oh, you find a keyhole concealed in a crack in the rock. Oh, well, wow. that could be useful later. Got any wow. keys? Wow, got any keys. Look. I don't have any keys. The genesis of naming it Antwerp because you love the city. It No, it is... There are... Um, let's see. What's the name of the... Uh, our, our, Humorous author, I mean, uh, game designer, uh, the tall guy, uh, did uh, uh, Superheroes of Hoboken. Uh, Steve Moretzky? Steve Moretzky wrote an article in, in the uh, Game Developers go. Magazine thing. Okay. And his, uh, he said there are certain words that are humorous by nature. And they have certain sounds. Holy mackerel! Where did it go? Did we save first? Did you save first? Uh -huh. Okay, good. It's not this screen, is it? It's oh, no, it is this screen. Too late! <laughs> you have to do it before. Okay. Well, oh, that's unfair. That's an unfair puzzle. It is! Come on with that. Obviously, in no shape. Pretty sure it's. I thought it was two over, actually. Okay. As a kid, I had no idea what to do. Yes, I know. Well, this is a guess the designer's mind. It uh, is. It's a puzzle. joke, okay? Phantom Beaver is here. I see. I'm late for the stream as it's very. It's a rare time every year. When you've turned your clocks already, but in my country, we haven't done that yet. Well, you're, you're smarter than our country. I mean, I really think daylight savings time is a total waste of time. Sorry, didn't realize that you uh, didn't realize that I didn't put uh, daylight standard time on my things. Oh, that'll be good. Uh-oh. You did it! Just in a later game, this comes into play as they as they assume the uh, hero did this, and uh, uh, all the uh, little baby Antwerps uh, become a plague. Oh. He's after you. I never adjusted my clocks. Much simpler just to treat local people doing daylight savings as though they're in a different time zone. Hey, really, it is. Population explosion is canon, yes. Ah, today I learned you can raise your sword to do that. <laughs> so
So the baby and breed with each other. Hmm. I just assume they get big again. And yeah, they get big again, and then somebody else yeah. pokes them, yes. and uh, they. Uh, and that's why we keep having more. Now note that they're very good at dodging, but they can get poked without being. All right. Okay. Uh, we'll still save Antwerp, yeah. even though it's post Antwerp now. How did you guys create puns for your games? Did you two, or did you have some team chats out, uh, for the cheesy one-liners? Uh, most of the puns. Whoop! I'm feeling about this place even even worse. Uh, okay, yes. so I have an even worse feeling about this place. That's a that's a uh, Kanishue art. You can tell because it's it's semi, realistic. It's, yes. yes and, and very grim, very grim. But you know, even with these few colors and few pixels, he managed really to tell the story of this place. Uh, so this is like a comic book art. Uh, yeah. They had very uh, restrictive uh, size and uh, color space. The idea that they pop up and keep popping up and then pop up again is really well done. So let us uh, casually walk away. Um, so back to the puns concept. Um, this game has a lot of dumb puns, and the dumb puns generally come from um, Bob Fishbuck, who uh, the, the look messages and things like that were his, and because he was put, they were they were programmed into the room, and uh, and it was his sense of humor that's. That set the tone for the game. Ooh, we're not getting very we're far. Not getting very far. You better run. We That's did the same, fortunately. Yay. Uh, so in a tough. sense, it's better to... No! You don't want to go that way! That's fine. Well, because this is a special seed, and therefore... Uh, and therefore they aren't suddenly going to be waiting for you in the Although we do have to wait for all the pop-ups. It is wild that there are several friggin' faces. Now, note that, that uh, those text messages were only the first time. So yes. there's a lot of subtlety to a game like this uh, in that... Uh, uh oh could not escape. Died. It didn't. That's fine, because I wanted to restore anyway where I still had full health. Uh, so there's a lot of subtlety to this of... Uh, What's your health? Uh, storytelling. It's pretty good. But I think possibly the brigands in this area, which is as far as you can get from town, are tougher than the others. So it's, you know, or possibly I was just timing the, yes, his shield badly. We are missing some blows that we should be hitting. Okay, that one, we were lucky. Now I am out of healing potions. going on here? Rest. Um, but uh, as I mentioned in previous streams, this was designed so that you had enough uh, health that you could fight two uh, reasonable level combats in a row and be low in health but uh, still be okay. But three was iffy. Three was 50-50 whether you would die. Uh, and that was to make it so that you just didn't go through and fight monster after monster after monster. <laughs> Valiant says he still can't not see a koala in the loading screen. Okay, I'll look for the koala in in the loading screen the next time it comes up. The uh, uh, I don't remember where the uh, flowers are. Where the flowers are? No, I don't remember. I didn't watch you. Yeah. Uh, either north of here or to the right or right and north and then. Somewhere. Oh, no, we found the graveyard. Yay! Certainly creepy here, even during the daylight hours. Good call from somewhere at the most likely time to find ghosts is at night. We need the sunset. Oh, is we don't need anything from here, so we need. No, we to need to stay out of here. Yes. Uh, so we had a little timing issue with 
this graveyard in the EGA version versus the VGA version. In the VGA version, as soon as you get into the scene, if you have not already used the undead on Gwent, uh, then the ghosts attack you and you die. And that was not, not the intention. You're supposed to be able to get in there and have enough time to react and say, ooh, I better use that undead on Gwent. And of course, if you don't have the undead on Gwent in you, then you have enough time to get out of there. Uh, somewhere around one of these screens is the uh, fairy rain. This is probably, oh, that's the Meeps. Mm -hmm. So I'm further north than I think I am. Okay. I am uh, basically remembering the map from 35 years ago. So I suppose I could actually look at, ah, uh, oh, here we go. What time is it? It is sunset approaches. Being rest, too patient to rest. Well, that's a problem. Um, and Valiant says I was watching someone stream this a while back. Managed to yoink the root and slip past the ghost without using the unguid. Ah, uh, wow! They managed to pull it off after a couple of dozen attempts. Wow, I'm impressed. Okay, and that is the difference between an adventure game and a role-playing game. If this was a pure adventure game, you have to solve the puzzle. The puzzle is the undead on Gwent. You don't have it, you can't solve it. Uh, because it's a role-playing game, you have tools rather than uh, uh, quest items. Right. Uh, and you can use the tools in a number of different ways. We need to bring Ungwent back into common use. It's a funny word. It's a to... salve. Yeah. It's a, an oil. Yes. Um, yeah, systems oriented. Yes, it's got a bit of a bug in the system. I'm making that. small rocks because I picked them up twice. Right. I don't know I should get that many at a time. Uh, and beautiful flowers and green fur. Lots of empty flasks. Uh, so that's part of the meta of this too, is that uh, you know you're going through and doing normal things. You do adventure games like drinking healing potions. That's a that's a D and D trope. Uh, but the question is, what happens after you drink the healing potion? And mostly people don't think about it. And we said, okay, well, if you drink a potion, we've got this empty flask left behind. Mm -hmm. And if you need a flask somewhere, yay, now you have it. So we had drunk a potion earlier, and so when we got to the uh, waterfall, uh, we were able to capture the uh, uh, flying water. Yes. Uh, Ferris is talking about uh, rumors and secrets website that had so many wild secrets for the Quest for Glory series. Uh, of course, it was likely, <laughs> like all early Pokemon rumors, none of it true, but it had me so excited to try each one. I specifically remembering one about Quest for Glory 2 and seeing this Starship Enterprise over the town or something. Well, the Enterprise is only in the opening cartoon. Uh, but you do see the star front, uh, whatever that we called it in this. The game. exit prize was in the exit prize two. is in two also, so you could find it. So yes, there is a starship enterprise in this one, and that is because Jerry Moore was uh, one of our main artists, and uh, Jerry was a huge Star Trek, and uh, you know, um, uh, what was that? Uh, Galactica what was the Battlestar Battlestar Galactica fan, and uh, you know the. Uh, Rocket Man thing. Just loved all those all uh, genre, science, all, science all the genre science fiction movies. He made so. himself a, a very realistic looking uh, jet pack for one Halloween, yep. and and people were like, he actually believes that'll work. No, it wasn't that. It was just he he loved the fantasy of it. Yeah. All right. Let's see. <coughs> I was just surprised that Quest for Glory Two <coughs> remake allowed for unguent importation. Wow, that's impressive. I'm back and stuck up for my hero on board trial. Yep, oh. I don't think I have any use for it. Unguent rolls off the tongue. Let's see. Um, so one of the uh, nice things here is there is a real-time aspect to this game uh, that for every one hour of real-time, a game day passes. And so by doing absolutely nothing... And sitting here and chattering, time is passing in the yes, game. Yes, but we won't get the fairies until we move out of the room. Oh, is that true? Yes. Because you can't, you, they don't change state in the middle of a room. Now I'm walk off. <coughs> there, see. now it's night. Now when you go into that room, the fairies will be out. 
There we go. This was fun music too. Ooh. Lucky a human. What's it doing here? Yuck. Let's have some fun with it. Humans. Why is it always humans? Go away. You can't play. I think it wants to play with us. Human, do you know how to dance? How do you dance? Dance, dance! Can you dance for us? Then dance for us. Humans can't dance. Let's see you dance. I bet you can't dance. Dance for us. I, all he wants to do is dance. Let's see you dance! Ah, oh, you're easily graceful. Graceful. You're not doing the baby dance. Ooh, it does know how to dance. Wowie! Certainly better than I can. This is neat. Gee, I didn't think you could do this. Well, I just love it. You love an Antwerp. Do not. I do too. It's all hands off. We still get the dragon. All right, I see the koala head. <laughs> so, what do you want? Wait, there's a bad dance you can do if you don't have the skills. I believe there was. It did the animation for the baby dance. It really looks stupid. Is that why you're? Why should we get the new dust? It danced for us, didn't it? Well, I say we give it some dust. That's because you have a crush on it. Dude? Yeah. Okay, you can do that. Dude, that's enough with a human. I'm not. And two. If you love it, you give it some dust. It's not me, you. Ooh. No, you. No way, you. Or well, we had fun me, writing you. this. <laughs> She'll touch anything. That's based on old commercial. Like he doesn't like anything. All right, all right. But you all owe me. All right, human. Hold out your hand and close your eyes. You will get a big surprise. Hold out your hand. What else could you do? No peeking. I think it's cheating. Oh, just give it some dust. Place the dust carefully away in an empty flask. If you haven't had the empty flask, you won't be able to do that. You're welcome. Any reason to stay around here? Probably not. I don't think so. And in fact, you end up dancing. You'd have to stay here too long. Uh, safe game. Get out of the room first. Nah. All right, fine. Got them to spell mats. It just hit me. Spielberg is home to the world's first cat cafe. Well, certainly Mordavia is. I mean, uh... bye bye. This is one of the fairies came in the next room uh, and said bye bye. That was now comes a, a nice uh, little goblin. programming touch. Yay, goblin! Fight, goblin! My theory is the fighter and the thief could do the dance, but the wizard is the one who does the shitty dance. It's something like that. It, it depended upon what your ad, uh, your uh, um, agility was. Don't you love it? Right, nine silver coins. We're doing pretty well here. We got 83 silvers. That's not quite enough to buy an undead unguent. Uh, we used up all our money uh, buying those potions. Yes, I know. That's the problem. So we are going to have to win some battles or, or do some you quests. We need to go, you know, clean, muck out the stables quite a bit. Oop, oop, oop. What happened? Something's coming after us. Or at least I saw something moving. The late there. frost of winter give way to the greenery of spring. So as I mentioned in the uh, blog post of the Patreon, that uh, this is the springtime game, and it is the uh, coming of age and youth and springtime and new growth after a cold winter and so on. And yes, there it is. What is that? It's a ghost, I guess. I don't know what that was, a bug? March free range. Oop! Run. Run and go to that archery range. Make it 
Non-escape the battle is on. Run away. It is not the battle you want. Now go up from this next screen. This one here? Yes, up, up, up. It's faster than we are. It keeps catching us. Can't change. Maybe if we had diagonals, we could do yeah, it. Yeah, maybe, but you don't. You didn't die. Probably. At least you didn't save. Run to Henry. Need to make use of your diagonal direction keys. Yes, I agree with that, but... Uh, Say hi to the dryad for us. Let me get different lines. Mm. Yes, the diagonals do work on this other keypad. It is a ghost. Restored characters, remember how they perished? No. No memory. We could have kept statistics on deaths and stuff like that, but we did not. That looks like a no, that's a man prey. Yeah. And there's another ghost. Yeah. Weird. I love how the ghosts move through this dithering it. Oh, okay. Made it to the farm. I think the centaur feels centaur is not here because it's nighttime. It doesn't work at night. Now I believe that we will find that this door is locked at night, but we'll, well see. Well, it was locked in the daytime. Knock. There's no answer. Uh, this turned out to be a problem because if you time the uh, graveyard stuff wrong, you get the quest from Baba Yaga that requires you to get the Mandrake root at night. I have a wrecked route, There's so nobody to open the portcullis, so Carl is away. We'd have to go up to Arana's piece to sleep if we wanted to sleep. Uh, Unless you can climb the walls. Can I don't you remember. Climb, I don't know. Climb your wall. Yeah. Uh, climbing. Zero. Nope. Have to go to Arana. Zero. Mm -hmm. Okay. Time gate is locked for the night. All right. There, uh, Tim's got to go. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for coming. For Yay. Getting some stamina points back anyway. Someone put together a montage animation of dance scenes in gaming, and I was delighted to see a priest nod to the hero of Spielberg dancing with the fairies. Yay! Yeah, so we could have worked in the stables, but of course. Ah, uh, yes, Arlo got caught with that bug that. Got the mission from Baba, but couldn't get to the healer to do the... Do yeah, the, so you need to get the on, dead Angwin from the healer, which you can only do during the day. So that was not a good piece of design. It really shouldn't have been that way, and we are sorry. We apologize for you, to you for that. It was just not the not understanding the theory of that it's a dead man walking situation. So we had to let them learn, too. You can also sleep at the dry ends, probably, yes. But it would be better to save it around this piece. Do we have all our, our, our ingredients? I think so. All those times I got pissed at a stuck game and never dreamed that the creators would actually apologize one day. Yeah, well, it's not something you can, you can't think of everything when you're starting to do these games. And remember, this was our first game. It's just like, it never occurred to me at any rate. Never occurred to you? That there could be such a thing as a dead man walking. Everything else? So apparently that fruit has made us never hungry again. And I could run to the right and run to the ogre, but let's not do that because. There's a brigand. Yeah, he's pretty.
for sister. Piranha's food is a once a day, keeps the rations away. Well, at least he uh, knew the context for that one. Yeah. I should see this field at harvest time. Yeah, it is spring. There's not much there. It's just plants. Wish so. you could ask him about a date with Hilda. Yeah, yeah, no, I don't know that that would go over too well. Sorry. Uh, I think there is a conversation along those lines where she basically says she's too young and mm -hmm. not ready to start dating yet. But maybe I'm remembering the book rather than yeah, the game. Yes, so I'm just saying at this point, things kind of get. All right. All right. Well, you sound so interesting. I'd like to meet them sometime. I'll get to work on that potion of yours. I still need flowers from Rana's piece. There was a big thing uh, on uh, AI uh, back before I started Sierra, where they were had a project going on, I think at MIT or Carnegie Mellon, something like that, uh, where they had various boxes and balls and so on. There was a red one and a blue one and so on. Uh, and they were all excited about the uh, uh, layer of uh, being able to say, uh, you know, tell the uh, robot, uh, get the ball. And it would do it, uh, except then it would ask you, do you mean the red ball or the blue ball? And then you could say, get blue ball. And it would handle that. And uh, it was all uh, very, very primitive by today's standards. But at the time, the whole idea that it could distinguish between many things are balls, but only some of them are red balls and stuff like that uh, was the state of the art at the time. And of course, a lot of that stuff was being done in like assembly language or maybe Lisp at best. And then uh -oh. the robot would say, ha ha, you said blue ball. <laughs> Probably not. It's come a long way, people. Yep, come a long way, baby. Mm, she's busy working. I don't know if I should talk to her. This spell push will take a while to make. Why don't you come back later? Okay. No one responds. Um, we could buy some more healing potions, but... Don't have much money, but we need to live. Oh, they're so expensive, though. So we'll come back later and get it on a dispel potion, which we don't actually need right now. Let's see. Do we still need to deal with uh, Erasmus and Fenris if we're not a wizard? No, or no. They're only for wizards? Yeah. Oh, I know where we want to go. We want to go to... Uh, let's, uh, oops. The Adventurer's Guild? Yeah, I want to go to the Adventurer's Guild and look at the uh, quest board. No one hears you knocking. Hello. Turn around to go on in. Okay. No one hears you knocking because everybody around here is asleep. Yeah. Uh, that uh, Guildmaster is a very good, uh, uh, you know, simulation of me. Add quests. It says quests. Word for return of lost ring. Inquired healers. I we thought we did that. that. We did that. We have been taken down. Reward for Elsa. Okay. Okay. The warlock. The brigand leader. 
Quests are almost all impossible, and we yeah. give them to you at the beginning of the right. game. This was bad design. Spell components needed, yes. That's the one. We can get more spell components. Oh, no. And the baronet. We could go get the baronet. Mm. Ah, if Quest for Glory 1 was made today, I'm pretty sure getting your head on the wall in the guild house would be a stretch goal. Probably not your head, personally, on, in the guild hall. But I can see, well, you know, uh, maybe having your, you know, choice of what monster you want in the guild hall and, and having you got to be the killer, yes. That's certainly a weird one. It says, slain by the two guys from Andromeda. Reference to Space Quest. A book. I'd be fine being a goon on the wall. Goon on the wall. I, Ralph, have come to Spielberg to become a hero. Is that my name? Yes. Ralph the Wonder Hero. Yes, it is. Yeah, Lori had a dog named Ralph the Wonder Dog. Yes. Oh, that's also the reason we don't have any money is we kept paying the uh, Weapon Master for lessons. Right, so we should go do some But our uh, healing's full and our stamina's full. Yes, go kill something. The Baronet, yes. I know as a seven-year-old kid, I had some ideas in my head that the sheriff had a romance with the healer. I know I must have made that up since I don't see any reference to it in the game. Nah, the sheriff and the healer, nah. They didn't get a little Sheriff and old lady, maybe. No, no. The sheriff's, sheriff's married. You know that when you're playing the thief character. Money? Sure. Okay. Because this is fine. Uh, Cata food. It is. Middle Eastern Catas. Does she not ever order? No, no, no dance. That's only in two. so far from home. go kill something. And as a warrior, we have most of what we need. We do, but we haven't got our skills up to enough to kill an ogre yet. Yep. So we Let's need to do it. You do need to kill something. The troll. The troll. Where are the ogre? I think it's ogre. You don't kill a troll. Unless well, we could go get the uh, rest of the rumors from the uh, mm -hmm. spies. Yeah, we need to do that too. Saurus, hostile intent is evident. Well, I'm at full health. Yeah, Andrew. And this is just a little purple Saurus. Yeah. But it. from the movie, we learned that uh, he's not going to have any loot on him, because I don't think they ever do. It's Barney. Boys, no treasure. Yeah. But we gained some more BU skill. And a little strength. Ah, because... Strength is related to weapon use. Oh, there's a little yeah. snow on the trees here. Yeah, maybe this the is... barber shop sign looks so much better in the EGA version. The VGA one looks like a gray X, which kind of works since the store shop is closed anyway. Air is crisp here, and you can see your breath as you walk. There is a path leading up to a dark mountain atop, which is precariously perched a purple house. Strange house nestled in its craggy peak. It's hard to see how much at this distance. All you can tell is the house is very large, very purple, and very strange. Now, this uh, path uh, with this level of resolution could be a path or it could be 
a pile of rocks. Yeah. And this is a problem I ran into programming the uh, uh, Quest for Glory 2 is I had a uh, scene where, uh, the, you know, the hero was uh, running along a plane um, and that was on the uh, prototype art. And then when they painted it, I discovered the plane that I was running along was actually the side of a mountain. And it didn't work at all. I had to completely reprogram it. What does it read? Bienvenue à mon magie. Okay. He is a multilingual. Another sign appears. It reads. Now go home. You feel as though you have just scaled the airborne <coughs> in full armor. What a climb. If we had enough money, we could buy armor at the uh, shop. Reached the rather eccentric looking house you saw from below. This eccentric looking house was based off of a children's book that I have had that had beautiful, gorgeous art. Let's get it, know this. Yes, it, it had, uh, it's all about uh, a woman who lived in a house with a bunch of animals. I mean, all sorts of animals, and one of them was the alligator. And uh, it had, it was beautifully illustrated. It was not much of the story, but. I brought the book in, and this is what Jerry Moore used uh, as a basis for this. And we thought it, uh, you know, Victorian houses in San Francisco, it's fun to have a gargoyle on a house. Yeah. And then, of course, there is the Monty Python and the Holy Grail reference to the Questions 3. Erasmus is buried in Basal. Sound this fast. Takes place in Switzerland. Basal. 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 I don't know. What is your name? Uh, Ralph? What is your favorite color? Uh, uh, purple. What is the thieves' password? I don't know. Good, you're not a thief. <coughs> Go directly to the tower. Do not dally. So that was a little reverse one. If you give... If you are a thief and give the correct answer, a thief's password, you get kicked out because you're a thief. Yes. It's a reverse jump. And this one, of course, is references to other Sierra games. There is the, uh, uh, the drinking bird. There was a toy for our childhood. There is uh, uh, the, the little... The Dunkin' Dragon, yeah. The Dunkin' Dragon. Uh, there was a uh, suit of arms, coat of arms, or a uh, suit of armor from... Uh, Girls be quest, and there's something from the King's Quest. <coughs> <coughs> the mirrors from King's Quest, wasn't it? You know. I don't remember what they all were. There were references all around. The pink work. That shade used to be, yeah, it looks very pink in this, and I, it doesn't work. It only purple word works, and yet this thing looks more like it's pink. Yep, oh well. It's not very purplish. And that purple <coughs> wasn't really a good color. This wizard must be a real character. Oh, there's a uh, airplane there. Wow. This is a Jerry Morgan. Moderately large and fearsome dragon. That would be the dragon over there. This is not either. <coughs> ah, the poor peacock. Oh, that's what's on the table. <coughs> <laughs> See, it's bedraggled, bedraggled, and overused. That was also in King's Quest. And the, that was a definite joke, although the... Ah, the airplane has the words Litton PD inscribed on it, which is from Police Quest. Um, yes, we were doing the, the... This was all full of references to other things. Look at Coffin's the, the sheet of the golden hair. Um, but the reason of, of the peacock's description... Uh, Rosella. Oh, there's the peacock has opened up. There yes, we go. it does. Yeah, it does after you actually ask about it. Yes. It's an excerpt for the Rosella Stone as opposed to the Rosetta Stone. Ah, yeah, okay. There is a picture next to the message. There's your picture. <coughs> Walk like an Egyptian. Yeah. Narlo says, this reason is this is the reason I own a roll-top desk. We had a roll-top desk for the longest time. It was beautiful. And a parlor chair. The hunter-gatherer tribe I lived with in Tanzania caught a warthog 
and my guide offered to let me have the head taxidermied to bring it home as a trophy, but I didn't get, go through with it. I heard the animal scream for its life before it died, and I wanted no part of it. Well, we had forever the taxidermied head of the Triceratops over our fireplace. Which, of course, was not from real Triceratops, but... It was a real taxidermist. It was a, a real taxidermist uh, in um, Clovis, which is uh, next to Fresno. Uh, uh, and it was based on the popularity of yeah, Jurassic Park. This big, this big, it was huge. Yeah. It was not like it was a baby type. You're out of camera there for that. Yeah, but. I know. Well, I was trying to be. My arms were extended to the top and bottom of the little bitty screen, uh, but it was. Uh, it was about two foot tall. Yeah, it and was uh, huge, really, uh, relatively speaking. For anyway, me. so uh, this guy was uh, selling these uh, uh, taxidermy things out of the back of a pickup truck in the parking lot. Of the movie theater that was showing Jurassic Park. And we bought it because... Because we, it was too cool. It was. It was like, oh, this is what we've always needed above our fireplace. And we had an honest-to-God fireplace at the time. But the uh, roll-top desk we bought was from uh, Mountain View, uh, mm -hmm. uh antique shop that had it on sale. And it was a uh, reproduction roll-top desk that came in sections. So the, the uh, top was removable and such. So it was a little bit more easily uh, transported. Uh, we didn't keep it because we had a lot of uh, humidity and mold in the house in Iwani. Oh, that's why we didn't keep the roll-top desk. Yeah, that's why we didn't but keep the roll-top desk. it weighted two tons and we couldn't Why didn't we keep it. the transaction? Right? Because we were coming down here to live with his mother. And we didn't think she'd appreciate she it. And she would not appreciate having the triceratops in her living room. We could have kept it in the garage forever, we though. We could have kept it in the garage forever, but that was not a good place for it. So we set it free. We gave it away. Because we couldn't give it a good home. Admire yeah. the plumage on the peacock. So the message says change because it's now open. Yep, and now he closes back down. The peacock, um, the other reason why there's a peacock in here is because one of my favorite children's books was... Um, the Diamond in the Window, which was a uh, story about uh, existentialism in, Mindy, in uh, um, New England and a reference to uh, um, uh, Thoreau and Emerson and the transcendentalists of that. But mostly it was about this really cool house that these two kids lived in and they had a... a uh, stuffed peacock that sat on the banister of the uh, main room and the girl had named it and and it reminded me that we were going to have a peacock we had that peacock from diamond in the window but it's really the peacock from uh yes, King's Quest really, IV. yes it is so the suit of armor was made for someone much taller than you the plaque underneath it reads be quite by colonel golden dijon there's, of course, uh, Golden's uh, uh, Spicy uh, Round Mustard, and there is, of course, uh, Dijon Mustard. So this is Colonel Mustard from the Game of Clue. Yes. Clearly. Carved animal head wall mounts are the way to go. I can't oh. bear to have a real head. I didn't want to have a real head. No, the uh, rat and the uh, wizard in the uh, painting disappeared. <laughs> Fenris, our guest has arrived. Your friend was. Cheese, please. Ah, yes. I had a neighbor who had animal heads around their house. So if magic know. be the loot of life, play on. The quote was music, not magic. And it was food, not loot. Oh. How oh, about well. magic makes the world go round? makes the world go round. Very well then, to put in my own words, magic is the essence and the soul of life, and the wizard is her poet. Actually, it was Merlin who said that first, but he used the word magician, not wizard. Fenris, are there times when you'd look better as a newt? Why is that? Because newts can't talk. Hmm, neither can most rats. Am I chopped liver? Am I invisible or something that you could talk about me behind my front? 
It's hard to take you seriously when you wear that silly hat. Last red hat, please. Oh, so the least you could do is ask you about something more interesting. Okay, ask about, do you know what you get when a Tyrannosaurus running back eastward meets a Tyrannosaurus running westward? A Tyrannosaurus Rex. Tyrannosaurus Rex. Um, ask about Dispel Potion. Ask about Baba Yaga. Baba Yaga is good at curses and shape-changing spells. She has a nasty temper, temper, so it's best to stay on her good side. Have to watch her. She cheats at cards. So do you. She started it. I just wanted to give her a taste of her own medicine. Shame she still beats you. Uh, do you know about the hermit? I don't know. I'll ask about it anyway. Ask about her. Best to wait until Rasmus puts down his cup of tea. Okay. Oop. 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 Is it true a monster? I don't know what the joke was, I but I don't know because right. you clicked through it. I can't remember that. Henry is adorable in both versions of this game. Hen Henry is a hermit who lives by the flying falls to the south. Great to see over. That means he actually laughs at Erasmus's jokes. I think he borrowed something last time I saw him, but I can't remember exactly what it was. Oh, well, Henry is a great one to talk to. But he hardly ever happens to have much to say. Um, I forgot games. Oh, just a little something challenge of mind magic. I like to play it every now and then, but Henry isn't much of a challenge anymore. That's because I always win. I still think you're cheating somehow. And the game involves casting four spells. Flame dart, open, fetch, and trigger. And it'll be worth your while. If you beat me, I'll teach you a spell called Dazzle. Uh, do I know any spells? No, you can know. You're steering hands off for whatever reason. Oh, he's tricky. No, actually, the hands off is misleading. Oh, okay. Should I say goodbye? Mm-hmm. Bye. Do you know what time it is when Otto walks through your door? Uh, yes. You met Otto already. Time to get a new door is the punchline. If you didn't know it already. Oh, if you really must go. Well, you know, he saved you that walk, so that was good. Nice of him. Uh-huh. This actually reminds me of a good friend from high school. I know he never played Quest for Glory, but boy... Could he talk? And he used to talk about wanting to be a hermit someday. Hey, honorable profession. And you know, there was a time where you could get paid to be a hermit in somebody's garden. In in uh, uh, A hermit in the garden? Yes. Yes. It was something in, in uh, Great Britain at some point in time that having your own personal hermit in your garden was seen as a status symbol. So huh. there were people... I've never heard that. Yes, and they would buy... They, build uh, things out in the back of their, you know, their thousand acre land, and then they'd have the uh, hermit uh, living there as a, and people could go see their, the hermit. So my sister was an enormous fan of the uh, group Hermit's Hermits uh, in the uh, 60s, uh, and we went to several other concerts like in uh, Atlantic City at Steel Pier. Hey, I still search body queued up. Ooh, nine silver coins. I only got one for the last one. Yeah, that was so, a wealthy one. So. That's the guy that won all the poker games, obviously. Really? Um, so Herman's Hermits, and uh, uh, she actually met uh, Herman. Uh, Peter Blair, Dennis Bernard Noon, is his real name, and uh, old stories about him. Uh, but... Uh, uh, he used to draw these little sketches of the uh, hermit. It was a little stick figure uh, drawing of uh, uh, the icon of the hermit, and that's how he signed his name. Uh, and so I was partly inspired by that with the idea of, uh, I'm Henry VIII, I am, so we made a, an hermit named Henry. Who talk like that? Who talk like that? I want to play poker with the goblins. 
But would they cheat? I don't think they're smart enough to cheat. I think they uh, are, are and, just uh, bad at playing poker. But, you know, somebody's always going to be worse. Where's our coins? We log. You looked at that before. I know, but that was a previous session. Okay. Yeah. Nothing to be gained by investigating this gaunt relic of a more vertical past. And that's be was put in there because everyone always asked, why is that log there? And we put it in there as a landmark uh, so you can figure out where you were. Yep. Strip is poker. This, is this a different room? Yeah, it is because you have to go back to get okay. to the uh, falls itself. This is the one that you can see if you stay here long enough, you can see. Spiegel's A or Mirror Lake. You pause for some peaceful reflection. And you do have a reflection. In and the, the uh, artists uh, were very proud of uh, being able very, to very make these uh, broken up reflection in the water work. That's uh, really a tour de force for uh, EGA art and the simplistic system we had here. Yay! Shifty, thrifting show. Just arrived with a rating party of 10. Welcome, hey, welcome. welcome. Pandorkful. Hi. Yeah, huh. yeah, I actually tuned into your uh, stream a little earlier. You were playing uh, Quest for Glory 4, I believe. Yay. And uh, thank you for playing our games. Yes, welcome, welcome. All right. Uh, but we can't climb, so we can't actually get up to talk to Henry. Uh, well, let's uh, try... Throwing a rock? Yeah. What do you know? Uh, when all you have are rocks, you throw them. Yeah. And throwing rocks seems like the only solution. And he walks over. Rock makes a sharp sound as it hits the door. This is an accident. You need right. to throw another rock. Hiya, 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 hiya. Pleased to meet you. Welcome to our stream. Oh, if my skill wasn't high enough, it looked like it was no, a pretty accurate. Rap. Rap. But it doesn't answer it. Oh, okay. Knock three times. Yes, really. Um, is, is someone there? There we go. Oh, hello. Come right up. Just, Just climb, climb the ladder. ladder. Oh, there's a magic ladder. Uh, climb ladder. Can't see the ladder. Yay, but we made it. There's our grid. You gonna save game? Yep. Ah, save game. Henry, Henry the Eighth, or Henry the Hermit in this case. Henry the Hermit. You knocked three times. Uh oh. Please move away from the door. Oh, oh well. he tells you this time, yay. Ah, I love that animation. Oh, hello, go on in. <laughs> it looks like a meep. He's got a lot of hair. Hello, how are you? I'm Henry the Hermit. That's me. Me father was an hermit, and me murderer was an hermit. So I, I, so as I come by me job rightly. I'm Henry the Hermit. Don't have too many visitors. Hermits don't, you know. Part of the job description. I like to see a new face, though. Good to hear a nurther speaking besides myself, so what can I do for you? Uh, ask about Erasmus. Yes, he's human. He's just been away for a long he's time. He's me friend, Ian Fenris, powerful wizards. He is. I hear his house is something to see up north. I don't make it out much, and he's pretty busy, so I don't see him too often, but when we do, we all get together. You can be sure we'll have fun. He loves to play his games, he do. Games. Henry wants me to learn how to play cribbage as a kid. <laughs> ah. Erasmus' favorite game is the Mage's Maze. After the magic user to play it, though, Erasmus is awful good at it. Ask about thing. Uh, ask about Baba Yaga. Well, I don't know much. Uh, ask about so brigands. I love how Henry is the most social here. He's very social, but the people don't come here. Nasty the sorts he is. I see some sneaking around the woods all the time. Other than the warlock, I has nothing to do with them. Is he uh, social or just lonely? He's pretty. He's lonely, really. 
He's not so bad. Got a good sense of humor, he has. I get the giggles just to think of him. <laughs> He's come by at times and top. Borrowed the mirror. What I borrowed from Erasmus, he did. Ah, now we find out what the item was. Ask about mirror. A magic mirror reflection it was. If you use it, one nasty spell was cast at you. It was what said it back at the one and what cast it. Do unto others, I says. He, he, he. <coughs> he pronounced his H's in his laughter. <coughs> yes. Immersion broken! Well, <coughs> is it as funny? <laughs> really? Gave us cold and clammy. Smells like mildew and wet dog hair in here. Sit down. Get yeah, closer to the chair. And that is because of the restrictions of the... Uh, I think. It's yours. No, uh, no. Norman is one who lives alone, far away from them, what talks too much or asks too many questions. Hermits are shy, quiet types, and what don't say much. Me brother, Eri, hardly ever says a word in a year. Me sister, Hortense, hasn't spoken since she was six. I never talks at all. Yes, we hermits knows how to keep her mouth shut. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm not sure what kind of an Is there anything else we from him? Not really. We got the information. We did it. If you ever be needing a place to stay the night <coughs> when you're up in the area, I could be willing to put you up for a night with for some rations and a couple of games of cribbage. So. We could offer to... Okay. Yeah, climb down, you get down off a dock. Let's see, how much money we got? We're up to 92 silver. Uh, did I not buy the yellow potion because I couldn't afford it? Yeah. I remember being slightly disappointed you there wasn't a cribbage mini game. That would have been a little tougher to, play, to program at that time. Mm. It wasn't within our, uh, our specs. I mean, just getting these mini games of uh, um, uh, Maze's Mage or which Mage's Mage, whichever one was in this one, the, the wizard game. Uh, uh, Mage's Maze. Um, was tough, really was, and we had to cut it out from game two. So. Ooh, well, mostly a uh, throw rock at Goblin. We are kind of hurt still. The the balance oh, doesn't. You oh dear. Uh, the balance doesn't quite seem right on this because there's really very hard to get healed up. And yeah. healing potions are way too expensive. Right, so we needed to uh, facilitate that a little better. It's two coins. And I mean, we can go and work up the castle, but that'll kill the rest of the day. It will, but, you know, it's not like the day matters. <coughs> Let's see if we can get some more clues from the tavern. I remember being, yes, the cribbage game, yes, indeed. All right, ah, oh, we haven't met Bruno before. Nope. Well, it's enough for me. If you give me a silver, I might have a bit of info you could use. A little silver might lessen my wit. For another silver, I could tell you where to go to find the Baron. You know where that is. Yaga, or some you know goblins who have a lot of treasure. So if you want some information, hand me some cash. Yeah, well, we don't have that much cash. So no. We're saving up, so. Sorry. Yep. Not not today. Uh, what you doing, Val? I was going to go over to the tavern and see if there were any more notes or secrets. Yes. Clues. So what's the deal with this guy? The freaking are planning to overthrow their leader, but he's also be betraying the... Uh, I say the Kiss Centaur says that wouldn't be appropriate. Alas. Ask about date. Yes. Thank you. What's next year? Ah, look, it's Bruno. I'm pretty... 
pretty sure Bruno and the hero will end up being real good close friends by the end. I just can't wait. Yeah. I could just tell. Yeah. 500 cell report. You really have to make a good uh, killing for that one. Yes. Bruno, two flasks. Mm -hmm. We don't talk about Bruno. Uh, yes, so Bruno. Yeah, we were first. We had Bruno yes. long before uh, Encanto. Yeah. Yes. I was going to say the uh, the idea he, that Bruno is is plotting to overthrow uh, everybody. Basically, Bruno's in for it for himself. Yes, he wants to take over the Raider big show. from Pandorpool, and uh, just like our dear good best friend in the whole world, Anami. Yeah, Ali Lisi. Yeah, I warn you, that name is best not mentioned around here. <laughs> A bar. I serve drinks. I want to drink order wine. You want to answer stupid questions? Get out. I don't see any more notes. I don't see any notes. No. I'm not quite sure what triggers them. I don't remember. Uh, the notes. Uh, Sam George says, go on fishing. And that's because he's playing fish in the next uh, room. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to say. Good job, Bruno, for f future games in the beginning, or decide to have Bruno in Quest for Glory 5 while making it? Uh, Quest for Glory 5, kind of, we were, uh, you know, thrilled with the opportunity to be able to make it because it had been canceled once. And we finally got to do it. We kind of thought about what things that we introduced in previous games that are loose ends that we can tie up there. Yes, it was always the thought that there would be five games at that point, and that had to tie all the threads. So the fact that Bruno does not get killed, you know, physically in this game meant he was a loose end and that he had to be handled. Um, and he just, he was an opportunity at that point when, we're, when I was working on the design for it to uh, bring him in and make him uh, part of the game. So, yes, I was really happy to do so. What you doing? Getting stuck. Oh, getting stuck on the box. I was going to uh, get some money by working. Yeah, you should do that. Ah. The Quest for Glory 2 remake made me realize that in the end, Kavin is sort of a loose end, at least in the thief end. Yeah, he's not a loose end in the fighting ending, so therefore, figure he's not really a loose end. I really ought to play Quest for Glory 5 one of these days. I've seen a stream, but never actually played it myself. Again, it's a much more of an open world than any of these games has been. Oh, you could waste some costs over here. Yeah. Um, I really do like Quest for Glory 5. I like what we did with it. It's, you know... Uh, very sophisticated in its combat. It's very sophisticated in its uh, uh, brigands. The brigands are all very intelligent. Uh, all of them have fuzzy logic, and they all behave. Each each individual monster in in the brigand things acts differently. Um, ha and each time you play, it's a different game. So um, it's got a lot of replayability. That sense. It spent a lot of time um, just doing the poker system for the game. The, the betting system uh, is very sophisticated. Well, there you fall down. Yeah. Um, ah, he gives some advice. He gives you some advice, yes. Uh -huh. So, Therefore, you could learn how to fight by listening to the Weapon Master. There's your lessons for the day. Yes. Remember that. Keep that in mind. All right. You need to rest a bit, and then we can go work the stables and get... What time of the day is it? The day is mid-afternoon. Okay. We are at one stamina point and 24 hours of health really points. We have really improved everything pretty well. Yeah. Our weapon use is good. Our parry and dodge are still pretty bad. Yes, you need to do more of this. 
I love Quest for Glory 5 music, the setting, the design, the story. I really loved it. I'm glad Webb had I love the music particularly. Uh, so I, the only problem with Quest for Glory 5 is um, the visuals. And they do not... Oh, my stamina isn't going up very fast. No, it isn't. Because they're really worn out. Okay. And now Sunset Approaches. So now we can go do the stable bar. Unless it gets too late. So I'll watch that. We're already tired. Ah, no, it's fine. Tired, but always ready to do more work. Do, 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 this is a Jerry Morard film. <laughs> As you can tell with the, the little subtleties of animation. It is a great tune. And it's nighttime. And you got some money. Five silvers. For all that work, yeah. But you could go to sleep. But we did not risk death as we, we did with the Reagans. Yeah. I remember in Quest for Glory 5, I'd swim for a long time till I drowned to get to Delos Island before I realized I had to make a balloon. Well, yeah. Yeah, sorry about that. We tried to hint that perhaps it's not the right way to do it by actually having you drown, but, you know, you never know. Oh, what a way to start the day with a good old workout. Little exercise, yes. yes. Using little animation sequences. Yes, it's right. a great little animation sequence. Let's for just a moment and get right back into it. Yay, so, horsey. You're a hard worker. You are. And you got five more silver. Yay, control I. Oop, control I. We have 93 silver because we spent back 10. On, on the we weapon. spent 10 and we got back 10. Yeah. We're. Uh, Our standard points are full. Hmm, that's odd. Oh, no, that was on me. I should have figured it out. I was really young playing, so I didn't really think that there'd be other ways to get to the island. Yeah, well, clearly you you need to learn. I recently replayed this series, and man, it was fun. Thank you, Car Carthage. Carthage, Mariah X. Oh, oh, no, we're going to have to do this again and waste our ten silver that we all spent all that time working to learn again. Well, that's what we did it for. We yeah, did it so we could get better at it. So that we can do and it. I read from your book about... Uh... Well, you know, you're, you're holding your own better, but not by much. But yes, we're, we worked hard to make this game fun, to make all of the games interesting, creative, and amusing. Because we really did. Our theory um, has always been the roller coaster rule of, of uh, how to make a game. Maybe. Which was much like the roller coaster ride that we went through working for yes, Sierra. Yes, yes, that was experience. And times it was amazing, and now we're doing much better than we were before. Yeah. I remember thinking. I could though, probably even drive him back at this point. If there was a way to ride Pegasus, if there had been expansion, it would have been cool to ride it. Yes, at that point, animating that sucker. Except would have been... it would have been forbidden because uh, you could ride Pegasus in uh, uh, King's Quest Four. Oh, that's true. And we weren't allowed to duplicate any allowed, trope that yes. uh, uh, Rosella. Well, no, they had a, that was unicorn. That was a unicorn. Was it a unicorn bridle? Yes, Rosella rode a unicorn. But even so, yeah. Oh, uh, you have a tendency to yes, overbalance yes. when you dodge a blow. This will adversely affect the timing and effectiveness of your counterattack. Yeah. All right. We're probably... Uh -huh. Problem solved. Let Pegasus ride you! Yes! And we've now used up all of our stamina points. We didn't take any health point damage from that. But and our parry and dodge both went up to slightly more reasonable levels. Right. Everything is improving. Yep. We are getting better and better every day. I was the reason I had to fly in a hot air balloon over Africa and go hang gliding over the Swiss Alps. Oh, God. The hang gliding over the Swiss Alps sounds absolutely fantastic. The last time, uh, Corey went to a bridge tournament last month and a half ago, and I went to the uh, wild animal park that was out that direction. 
and they have a, a hot air balloon and so I honestly rode the hot air balloon up into the air which just basically looks over the uh, the, the uh, wild animal park and things like that but that was the first time I'd been in a balloon and it wasn't bad but I think that riding a real balloon is something super scary because I mean unless it's tethered you never know where you're gonna go so really you're making a uh, 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 like in, in Tilly's tale, you're making a controlled uh, uh, blimp more than really just an ordinary balloon. You can have control over its directions, yes. Um, agree that not being able to fly the Pegasus feels like a missing point, and so I think being able to enter the caldera of Draconis. I think 5 needs a sequel. Well, if 5 needs a sequel... That would be interesting, but what it would be um, is that um, if Five had a sequel, it would be with the kids of, uh, of the hero and whoever he married. And that would be the culmination now, of the series. Now, we did talk about making uh, expansion packs for Five. Yes. And that would have been uh, basically adventures with... Uh, Nope. Pirates and such. Nope. You don't want me to fight him? Not at this point. What's your health? Oh, it's a little down. 44 out of 68. Not too bad. I don't think you're quite up to snuff for him. Uh, I can rest some more. Invasion rest right now. It's a safe game. Yes. Never know where you're going to go. That sounds right up the alley of someone who's a member of the Adventures Guild. Yes. Ooh, instead of classes with, it's kids with Rana. Yes, kids with Elsa, kids with Katrina, which is going to be inclined towards thievery, marksman, magic, and yes, exactly. You don't pick your stats. You pick whoever you wound up marrying, and that gave you what character your child is. And then uh, you would be playing that out and going to different places like uh, um, India and other places like that. And uh, then eventually you'd wind up coming back home, and that's when you could have the culmination in Silmaria. He's an ugly brute. You play as Baba Yaga getting revenge on the hero. There you go. Ah, you did it. Ooh, the ground shook when he fell you down. You did. It's a big, big ogre. This is no treasure. Treasure chest is carrying lies beside his body. Search chest. I don't see the... That was a mean ogre fight. Yep. No chest is locked. Break chest. You force it open. Gains one gold and 43 silver, which you take and put away. We now have one gold and 126 silver. Cool. We have enough to buy an undead on Gwent and some healing potions. Could explore more of the universe like those demons. Yes, indeed. There was a lot more we could have done with the series. So, one of the uh, things in here was uh, RNG and, you know, how to make this, uh, you know, an adventure game still, but also a role playing game. And so we decided you could not save the game during combat uh, for two reasons. As one, so that you couldn't exploit the game by if you had a, got in a couple lucky blows to save it uh, and win the combat that way. And second, uh, to protect the players so they sit, wouldn't end up saving over another game and then discover that uh, they were in a no-win situation. Right, they're losing combat. Yes. Which can happen. Right? So we decided not to allow saving uh, during combat, and besides, it would have been hard to maintain the state. Uh, it's almost uh, 4.30, so... Almost. So you're going to go get yourself killed you save the game? Yes, I did. Okay. As your eyes adjust from sunlight to darkness, you examine the interior of this eerie cavern. This is a very effective room. I like the bear in this room. I you mean, sense something moving off to your right. Avoiding dead ends? Are you sure this is a Sierra game? Who? <laughs> the cavern contains some impressive formations. It's rather beautiful. On one side of this cavern is a creature which looks like a large bear. Bear with me. Is that talking bear still there? It is still there. It's still an Oakhurst. 
very large hungry bear. You're not close enough. That's how you diminished. The bear takes a new attitude towards you. Who can prevent forest fires? Forest fires. The key. Yes. He'd make a nice rug by the fireplace. Uh huh. This section of the cave has an eerie quality. Now, if we had that magic mirror and could reflect the cobalt spells. Yep, forest friars. Yes, indeed. Only you can prevent. Forest friars. This strange creature is dressed in ragged clothes, large pale eyes. Gollum, Gollum. They must have spent their entire life. Large brass key hangs from a thong around the creature's neck. Your foot slips. You go, you know, stay here. Fight. Yeah, how do I get there? Winning or losing? You're taking damage. Uh, control S. Health points. Ten out of seven. We didn't bring any more healing potions. No. Nope. We're in trouble. Oh well. Thong just needs strap. Yes, yes. Oh, you're supposed to be wearing thongs around your neck? I've been doing it wrong my whole life. Yes. The force we survived. The state's fast. Oh my God. You. Did it? I'm impressed. Uh, we'll just replace it and hope we don't die. Yeah, uh, now we've done that. Ten out of seven. Don't forget to find the hidden chest. I don't know that you can. I don't think you can stumble into can it. Can you? Just yeah. bumped into something floor. Feels like a large wooden chest. Open chest. Doesn't fit in the chest. Break chest. You pry at the sealed lid of the chest and then. Wow, must have been booby trapped. You can feel the damage. Control S. Zero health points. Uh, uh, why are we still alive? Ten gold and sixty silver coins, but we're dying. You're a dead man walking, look. It's almost edible to a cobalt. Maybe we don't want that. You had a health potion. You could save yourself here. Yep. You had to learn how to spell to play these games. Don't have any of those. No. I'm surprised. It's uh, We must be at 0 0.1 uh, health. Let's feed the bear again. Uh, unlock there, I guess. That's an awkward the place. The key disappears as you turn it in the lock. Uh oh, it's a magic bear. It's going to attack us. You have nope. the honor of meeting the bear in that one hard one spellhook. We are pleased that you have broke. Our enchantment, perhaps our father, the Baron, will reward you should you ever visit our castle. No, it's worse than a bear! It's a baronet! The arrogance of the baronet astonishes you! Perchance the cobalt magic is there a reason for changing into a bear. It's unbearable! One scene, one scene, and that's what we need to know that the baronet is a spoiled brat. All right, it is 4.32, and we have done some amazing things for a day. Yes, 
Have there ever been talks or thoughts of having Quest for Glory on game systems back in the day? Yes, we did try, but it wasn't possible at that point. What time of day is it? Can you eat a fruit? You... It is mid-afternoon. Yeah, this is a good place. And to we see. have one health point. Yay! Now this is uh, what we considered as Dungeon Masters to be the perfect dungeon run. It's the one where every player was lying unconscious in the ground except for one player who is down to his last health point as the last of the monsters fall and yes. they get the treasure. And then you hopefully find some healing potions yes, or something in there. There should have been some healing potions at yes, Cabal Chest. Uh -huh. I think you missed an opportunity to have the baronet trapped under a net. A baron a net. Ah, ah okay. Yeah. yeah, we didn't think of that we one. We did not. All right, save the game. Place can hold no more save games. All right, so rename it. Can you rename it? Yeah, but let's go to some of the earlier oh, okay, ones. Uh, replace. We'll replace that with safe after Cold. saving baronet. Okay. Yay! We have done much. We did it. We did so much better than we've done in previous. Uh, Runs of our own games. I didn't intend to get out of there, but you're I don't just gonna wanna... stay there. Yeah. And say goodnight. Yeah. Time for a new subfolder. Yeah. Well, we have a lot of limits in space here. We shall quit. Give me up, huh? Uh huh. Well, and that is our game for tonight. We've made huge progress in here. Huge progress, and we have uh, uh, saved the Baronet, which is one of the quests in the quest board, and a very, very difficult one. And we have uh, fought some monsters. We have fights, yes. We've acquired a great deal of money, which we will use some of to buy healing potions, which we desperately need. You delicious Arana's pieces. Uh, we have turned in all the materials for the dispel potion, but we need to go back to the yep. healer to re pick it up. Yep. yep. And we can uh, maybe buy it on Dead on Gwent now, which Yay. we don't know we'll need. But um, now Ron Gilbert, one of his rules was never find the solution to a Problem. puzzle before the uh, puzzle, but. We're kind of mixed in that. Yeah, there are some senses you want, you want it and others you don't. So it depends on the thing, yes. And this one, because we know that there is a problem with the game, uh, yes. that if you talk to Bobby Yag at the wrong time, that you can't get the Undead Unguent, uh, it's better to uh, cheat. And right, it's forget. better to live, let them Just figure we course. died six or seven times. Just figure it's that. a game. So you get something because it's a game, just because you can. Yes. Thank you all for showing up. We are uh, happy to have you. Are you going to hurry to get out here or something? It's 4.35. Yeah, I know. I'll read this until 5.30. Okay, yeah. Well, go check that yeah, it's a time for... 5, 4.36. And what, what are we meeting again? Hit that again. That oh, what are we, oh, the calendar. Calendar, yes. Oh, Lori wants to know that on April 6th... Just after. April 6th is in two weeks. It's not a Fool's Day. We won't have a Fool's Day thing, though, because it's way past the full. Yes, April 6th, we'll be having our next stream. Uh, and uh, we'll continue with part six of uh, Heroes Quest. And we're making amazing progress here. Uh, we're not really tough enough to take on all the brigands in the brigand fortress, so we probably need to just run around and fight monsters. I'm not actually sure what the intent was. I thought that, you know, if you, like, slept overnight, you were supposed to get most of your, most of your health back. Yeah. Uh, it should have with Arana's Peace. We were intending... Yeah, sleeping in Arana's Peace should have, you know, should give you your health back. Um... Uh, I'll be at the new Super Cincy Expo, so I'll have to watch the VOD. Oh, well, I'll be Yes, too. all of our uh, video on demand is, uh, it stays up on Twitch for up to two weeks. Uh, and then after that, uh, or sometime in that process, I export it to YouTube. And we are on the Hero U Game channel on uh, YouTube. Let me get you a link to that. So if you ever miss us, you can always pick us up and see these things because you'll never miss us that way. Uh, view your channel. Yeah, just yeah. give them the link to that. That's a complicated link. It is. If you just get a cop. Isn't there a short link to this? No, no, you have to. It's a system. Just click that and. Okay. Well, anyway, this it. this link gets you to the. Uh, uh, so it's a hero you dash game or something like that. 
Hero You Rogue Redemption channel on uh, YouTube. And that's where you can find all of our past content. And you can find uh, Lori reading her book uh, uh, that she wrote with Michelle Baker and that we haven't gotten around to publishing. Uh, needs a little editing still. So uh, anyway, we're hero. glad you showed up. We will and we'll see you all in two more weeks. And ta-ta for now. Have fun. Hasta la vista, baby. Then your memory leak may be related to filling up your save. Nah, probably not a memory leak in this. Yeah. It's just, uh, yeah, it's just the amount of uh, on floppy disks, you know. You didn't have that much space you on floppy disks. You just didn't have the space for saving, and your computer didn't have a hard drive. So I'm going to end this stream. Ta-ta. Ta-ta for now.